two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 127 of the Terminus Podcast. Woo! I'm your dispatcher, Ellis Tonelio, otherwise known as the Admiral. With me, my engineers are Brett Weebold and Nick Christensen, hey. and our fireman is TJ Sakoshikoshikoshikmo. Hello. Uh, Down in Sakokamo, Aruba, <laughs> Jamaica. <laughs> With us, our guest breakman is Doxon, returning once again. Welcome back. Yeah, hi. Hello. Literally, welcome hi. back. When you asked Hello. the question, you went, screw it. I have nothing yeah. I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what you, that's the, that's the rationale you have to have. At least you didn't, uh, at least you didn't, uh, get thrown in Gulag yeah. like Fliegel last, last time. So, anyway. Before we let anybody out of the Gulag, the train will terminate at this station. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Terminus Podcast. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And Bye, roll everybody. credits. Bye, anyway. I'm going to bust so, my buffers all over your now, face. Now, Weibull deserves to be blown <laughs> hey, up, but he minute. wasn't in any of these crashes that we're talking yeah. about this week. Uh, KCS is, of course, the current holder, the secondary current holder, because we have to do this because KCS never derails this Canadian Pacific. Uh, they're the unofficial champion. Um... And this week we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight crashes. Half of them are from Union Pacific. So let's uh, Ooh, not a great well, week. let's start. Let's do let's do chronologically. Anyway, as we typically do, BNSF was first on August twelfth. I almost said October again. Uh, Damn it. August twelfth, where four thousand gallons of diesel fuel spilled onto the tracks near Trout Creek, because that's what you want—a diesel spill near a river. Uh, BNSF railway crews working north of Madras overnight have removed five derailed locomotives Jeez. and a rail car. They derailed more locomotives than cars. Uh, two of the locomotives and whatever were taken to Gateway for mechanical assessment and adjustments. Three other were moved to Madras. Uh, they're removing the affected rock and soil. Geotech experts are on site. Blah, 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 blah. They're going to have to repair the track, of course. 80-car freight train struck two large boulders that fell onto the tracks in a remote area. Uh, oh, God. So, nice. Also, oh, okay, okay, sorry, I, I misread, I didn't read the whole sentence. It was hauling 11 empties and 64, oh, sorry, 11 fulls and 64 empties. With five engines. I was confused at first, I thought you said fulls, like baby horses. No. Yes. <laughs> It's Although they aren't saying what was in those cars. So, could have been. It was, it was Foles. They were on the way to the glue factory. That's like the, the Family Guy, or, what was it, is it Family Guy or Simpsons? The, uh, you know, you could win this boat or you could open the secret box. And it's, well, but anything could be in the secret box, even a boat. <laughs> uh, anyway, one person was injured in a crash on uh, the same day by CSX. GG. There really isn't much other information here. Rescue crews are on the scene at the time of this article being posted. Two trains collided. Oh, that's right. That's right. There was a collision. Ugh. So uh, it'll say that it says they'll update this as more information becomes available. But that was 12 days ago, so I don't think they got more information. Uh, there was a picture that Kavan posted of it. Unfortunately, I can't pull it up right now. But there was a picture. It looked kind of rough. Uh, thankfully, again, only one injury. I think it was a rear-end collision and not a nose-to-nose. -nose. Uh, unfortunately, a Canadian national worker did uh, fared worse. Uh, a rail car derailed and turned onto its side and crushed to death a CN employee. Jesus. An auto rack car that fell over. Yeah. That's a little rough. Yeah. Uh, the company offers condolences to the family. And I mean, really, that's just a... 
First of all, that's not the only person crushed to death this week. Or this, you know, uh, but it's the only person that I've heard of, certainly in recent history, where a car has just toppled over the tra- off the tracks and fallen on them. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh... It's, it would be a little bit more comical if the person didn't get brutally crushed to death. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if we're talking about comical derailments, you can see this pileup of around 30 cars that was a the first Union Pacific derailment on the 16th outside of Hillsboro at 3.45 p.m. on a Monday. That's outside of Dallas-Fort Worth, just south of there. Uh, 30 cars on a UP train... Uh, no one was injured, no chemicals spilled, just a lot of metal all over the place. Uh, mostly hoppers by the look, some loaded lumber, and some other miscellaneous stuff thrown in there. So that was the first of the bad news from them. BNSF then derailed again on the 18th of August. Uh, I like how it's the Weather Channel that's reporting on these. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually... Uh, it's gonna be raining the, flaming scrap iron around 3 o'clock this yeah. afternoon. Okay, this is why. Of, this is yes, why. Uh, a storm pushed over 140 cars. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two trains derailed, about 90 cars on one and about 50 on the other due to strong winds. Uh, all empty double stacks. Of course. Uh, winds measured as high as 67 miles per hour and two inches of rain. Uh, wow, two inches. I mean, two inches of rain is not insignificant. It depends if you how think quickly about it, it happens. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, the easy rule of thumb is an inch of rain is equivalent to about a foot of snow. So getting two feet of snow dumped on you is uh, pretty significant. Mm. And two inches of rain, that'll... Again, yeah, in a in a short period of time, it's much worse, but that'll still disturb some things. I guess it depends. Like, if you live in, like, northern Alaska, that sounds like a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, right? Uh, anyway, the, the headline here for August 20th is the third Union Pacific derailment in just over a month at the same Spokane Yard. Uh, we actually reported on the last one of these, and I assume the one before that, about 6.15 p.m., Two derailed cars that were empty. I just don't know how, um... Uh, oh, yeah, that was the molten sulfur derailment was one of the last ones that they're uh, referencing here. Uh, yikes. But these these two were empty. Then literally the next day, they derailed again, uh, and they had to contain fuel after a spill on the southwest side of San Antonio. Uh, not... Too much information here. They're holding materials. One engine leaking fuel. Uh, yeah, they sort of squiggled some cars. Happened at night by the looks of it. And then also on the same day, uh, there was a fatality. And this was the other worker crushed to death that I mentioned. Uh, another Union Pacific employee pinned between two tank cars. No. Right. Oh, he got. Oh, he got coupled into. I. It doesn't say exactly what happened, but the assumption is yes. Uh, the accident happened near a chemical plant. Further details on the investigation were not immediately released. Uh, the man had worked for the Omaha, Nebraska-based company for 16 years uh, as part of its Ghost Gulf Coast Service Unit. So. Yeah, that was uh, that was in southeast Texas in Beaumont. That's a so grisly that way to go. Unfortunate, yeah. So lots of bad news all around. Not all laughs and explosions this week. Mm. Mm. Is that all but the? Is that the class one though? That's that's all the class one mental responsibility. Okay, so I have a story that is funny and is also derailment okay. related. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, good. So, we need something to brighten this up. I'm feeling pretty miserable right now. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, turn off the YouTube video. Anyway, this happened while I was on vacation, so I didn't hear about it until just now. But apparently this was at the museum probably two weeks ago at this point. They were switching Lulabelle, which is one of our display engines, over to the roundhouse just to get it out of the way to swap some cars around 
I think the with the goal being to bring Rico over to the roundhouse for some work. Which one is Lulabelle? Lulabelle's the, the little one? The yeah, standard oil number one. Okay, thank you. Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they're they were doing a couple things with Lulabelle. It's like, okay, well how do we do this? Because Pee Wee, our little gas mechanical, isn't strong enough to move Lulabelle because the motion's kinda seized and it doesn't really like to roll because it just sits. But Diesel number four doesn't have a standard gauge coupler on it. It's only got the narrow gauge, whereas Pee Wee has a standard oh, gauge on one and a narrow gauge on the other. <laughs> so they said, okay, we'll use Pee Wee as an idler car. We'll go out, we'll couple into Lula Bell with Pee Wee, and then grab Pee Wee. Well, because what else are you going to do? Use the idler car. The idler car's isolated. Oh, God. It's Why did you do that? <laughs> because we can't build the frog that it connects to. It's this big, long thing. Because we had Pee Wee and we don't have yeah. the idler flat. Anyway. This this wouldn't be a big deal, you know. It's no no problem, and it worked fine when they eventually got to doing it. Um, the idea being, you know, okay, we'll drive Pee Wee over, couple into Lula Bell, and then we'll go get Diesel Four, drive over, couple into Pee Wee, and then we'll pull it back together. So they start taking Pee Wee out, and to get to Lula Bell, you have to cross the parking lot. Now we just have a dirt parking lot with a piece of dual gauge track that runs between it, and the rule is, or the unspoken rule until this point is. Before you cross the parking lot, you go out with a shovel and a broom and, in some cases, a pick and a rake, and you you know, you know clean off the track because cars are driving over it constantly. It's yep. In a lot of spots, you can't even see the railhead. The track is just completely buried under the parking lot. Also, it's it's kind of gravel, too, isn't it? Just dirt. Just, you know. it, it depends on the spot. Most of it's dirt, though. Okay. It's, it's mostly okay. dirt. So they go out. And unfortunately, Jeff got a phone call or something, and Dusty wasn't present. And it was, you know, a couple of crew members that are, I guess they weren't informed of this rule. Ow. So they start taking Pee Wee across the parking lot, and they're going, they're going, they're going. And the engineer eventually gets to the other side of the parking lot, but is face to face with the fence on the other side. Oh, no. And the I'm gate that the track goes through is about. 50 feet to his right. Oh. Oh, my God. And we're real, you know, they're looking at it realizing the track through the parking lot is a pretty significant curve. And Pee Wee just... <laughs> they went straight. It just hit the dirt, got right up off of the track, and drove across the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, they, so they had to do a derailment. They're, they had to re-rail Pee Wee. Yeah. When it had gone like 200 feet off of the track, it wasn't exactly the easiest thing yeah. to rail. No. They could have so just, just thrown it in reverse? Th no, they did. They, they threw it in reverse. <laughs> they drove it back across the parking lot. They had to sort yeah. of nudge it a couple times with the, uh, the front end loader to get it back on the track. And then they went and shoveled the track and <laughs> continued with the operation. <laughs> but uh, so our latest derailment wasn't 346. Now Pee Wee is the most recently derailed piece of equipment. And imagine if you get. Imagine if your car was there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it got hit. Well, imagine if your car gets there, and you know the crew's gone away to you know get supplies or something to rerail it, and there's just a locomotive parked in the space between your car and the Prius. Yeah. Like there's just there's just an engine sitting in the parking lot. Like a glove. Like Man. a glove. Man, Pee Wee tried. I mean, to it is a stick. Like... It takes unleaded. Yeah. It's basically a <laughs> tractor just on train wheels. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the museum shenanigans for the week, um, as far as derailments are concerned, anyway. Yeah, we we didn't do too much about the about my museum. Too much week. derailing. Uh, I was gonna say you guys managed yeah. to stay on the track. <laughs> yeah, we managed to stay on the track, and now we got a neon sign that we pun in the car barn. That nice. get victory sub. Uh, the sign is actually from a cafe called the Weather Electric Cafe. And the Weather Electric was the nickname for Southern Pacific Center Urbans that they ran up here. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Yeah. So there is. I thought you were like, up. we got a big neon sign. It says Rio Grande, and it's from Salt Lake City. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, Weibel, why we'll be able to talk about that a little later. Where did that go? I, will cover I, it I took it. Okay. No, no, I mean, like, literally. In real life. Oh, oh we, uh, somebody... we'll, we'll talk about it. I know where it went, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so that's about all I have for the museum. Uh, but I do have some Minecraft stuff that I've been doing. Uh-oh. With, oh. the, with the modded pack, <laughs> as I do. 
Uh, because that, that looks like 90% of the Minecraft stuff looks relevant to the show. Uh, <laughs> I've been messing around with uh, taters. And in my single player, I've been flying line through the Durango and Silverton. Yeah. Alright, from Durango to Silverton. And one of the entrance that's built into a Mercer Railroading is a K-36. <laughs> so it's all at home there. Yeah. Although uh, the map is 150 scale, so that kind of screws the uh, odd stuff. <laughs> My the canyon is kind of recognizable. Like, uh, yeah, you can tell that it's there, but yeah. it isn't yeah. as pronounced as it is in real life. Yeah. It's not as much of a canyon. No, it's a. It's just a ditch. Yeah, it's, just it's a, more a. It's more a ditch, really. Well, I. Uh, I'm glad that this is is doing what it's doing. I really like the. Uh, I really like that concept, you know. Weibold, you were talking about doing something like that ages yeah. ago. Yeah, we were talking about when we first did, um, or when we were looking at doing immersive railroading in lieu of Rails War after we had, you know, it first came out, basically, and we realized it performed a little bit better, at least in some aspect. Um, we were talking about doing, like, a transcontinental challenge. Yeah, I have that written down somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. would still be cool, it's just a matter of logistics, and honestly... Immersive Rioting, I haven't played it in a while, but have they fixed all the memory leaks? Like, it ran, like, garbage last it's time. Been, it's been pretty optimized. Okay. About as optimized as you can get with the Java system. Uh, okay. It, it Java ran, Java. like, crap last I played. Like, you couldn't... If you had more than three pieces of equipment on the yeah. map, the entire server would lag out. Like, it just didn't work. Yeah, I... I had like three box cars behind me with satyrs on and fifty mod. So that's pretty good. If that tells well, you, well, satyrs is client side. Well, yeah, true, yeah. but it's still something that you accept the the memory. even. I was gonna say even yeah. so, the that was yeah. half of the problem is your client couldn't handle it with three pieces of equipment. Yeah. Out. Anyway, uh, next from that, uh, I'm doing some work in trains. On a little mm -hmm. town called Dollar. And that's how much it's. Dollar, done. dollar bills. No. Dollar, I barely know her. <laughs> yeah. And I've also been working on uh, this little area in between the town and this road crossing that I have. That's just cross bikes thing. Nothing too special about that other than. Um, well, I, your road seems to have. Uh, your railroad seems to have sunk into the ground there. Suck. Just a little. It's an interurban. <laughs> and it's declining years. So maintenance as long is as, you, as long as you broom off the track, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and before the interurban car enters somebody's shop. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, there's the work in progress town, and then I decide. I think you have about yeah. twenty too many tractors on that field. Maybe. <laughs> I I may have gotten a little where is this? Oh, I'm in the guest list. Whoops. No wonder I'm not seeing any of this yeah. crap. <laughs> Holy Moses. That is a lot of <laughs> factors. They're all traction engines, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I may have gone ham it's with It's a convention. <laughs> it's a convention. <laughs> yeah. They might call Who's it a team up. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, there's the farm that I decided to add because I'm like, okay, there's only one industry on this branch, or well, two. There, there's a warehouse that gets like free box cars and a forestry that produces like 20 cars at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought it'd be nice to have something in between the both uh, endpoints of the route. So I had this farm. And then proceeded to add abandoned trap to the town. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the whole thing has a uh, turf effect uh, for the wheat and the grass that I don't have yet. Mm. Well, I love hate relationship with the turf F the yeah. turf FX. Yeah, I do. I do. wish I had it. It looks it looks really good. It's just hard to do well because the 
the the boundaries are so tricky to use. Yeah. Like you can't keep it from just going everywhere when you use it. Yeah. Everywhere. It, everywhere. The thing I've noticed is that you sort of overhangs by like one smidget by wherever you sit at. So you gotta be very picky about where it goes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really work well on corners. Yeah. Other than that, it's just fine. It's great. It's better than... I'd, I'd say it's almost better than having a spine for the entire way. Because it yeah. unloads when you're not looking at it. Yeah. Do you... Does it do better if you have a 5 meter grid on versus 10? In terms of going in the I right have places? no idea. A little bit? But it's it's just not fine enough. The splines, you know, you can bring them right up to the edge of the ballast. Yeah. The trouble, even with the five meter, is it's still on a grid system. So if you've got a track that's anything except for running at, you know, parallel or perpendicular lines with the world origin, it just doesn't like it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tied to your your uh, texture, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I still wish I had it. Yeah, yeah it's it's definitely yeah. cool to use. The one that I'm liking more is the. Uh, uh, and I think this one's harder to use. It's the ray tracing textures. So, like, you get the the 3D grass textures or the mud or the rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's oh, the, cool. The, the PBR textures, I love those. Yeah. yeah yes. You yeah, can get farm fields that actually have little furrows in them. Or the, again, my favorite the is the mud to thing. use it on a coastline. Yeah, I've been yeah. using like just like the ground texture under the grass, and it looks great. It really like blends it together really yeah. well. All, all the textures on this route so far have been PBR. I can't wait to see what it looks like with someone with PBR turned on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I. I um. I wish I had them. I I've having, yeah. I was having my issue with. So I have like my grazing fields where I talked about last time, where, I came up with the idea of making a little almost mini modules or, or mini dioramas, you know, it's like yeah. one or two trees and some rocks and some tech and some splines that I can paste all around in these fields. Mm -hmm. And I made a selection of like six or 10 of them and I can just randomly scatter them. So they're not just blank, but they still seem too blank. So I went out and found a grass spline that I liked and now I'm trying to cover these fields in grass spline. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, I wish I just had grass. I just... <laughs> Uh, grass, grass, grass. Yeah. I'm going to put some cows out there, too. but uh, And it, it sort of made me think about, well, what do I want to do with the other areas? Because there are going to be some stands of trees. There are going to be some whatever. I am over most of the texturing hurdles on Tolbrent for, er, for the section that I'm working on. Almost everything else is either forest or field. Nice. And yeah, that's got to feel good. Yeah, it does. I do need to do some more industrial work in downtown Mason Valley, but Mason's Landing is pretty much done, and the only other thing, I just finished RJ Canyon, which came out awesome. Um, it's one of the first canyons that I really, really like how it looks, mm -hmm. and the only other thing that's now going to vex me, I'm sure, because I've made it happen, is I added another town. Hmm. Probably the probably the smallest actual town that I'm gonna be building, at least in this section. Aside from oh crap, I still gotta do Doe Cliff, so I do have some more complicated town stuff to do. But that part is less important because that's like right at the edge of the map, and I might actually ignore it until I do the next section. Right. Anyway, this little town is called uh, Lionhead, and it's up there in the mountains where the new VMR diverges from the old VMR. The old VMR used to take this windy route through the deep mountains, and the new one just goes across the giant bridge. Mm. So, I wanted to make that, you know, kind of important. And, uh, and, so I made a little town there, and I started, like, okay, what, what would go here, you know? It would be a helper point, probably, there's a big Y, uh, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I could add a little coal mine. So I immediately messaged Chris, like, hey, I'm making the first coal mine on Tolbrand. I need some guidance. Can you help me? And so he's like, yeah, yeah, I can help you. We can sit down and we can look through some, some stuff, some pictures, whatever. And 
I was like, all right, cool. So now I now I'm gonna design this this little coal mine area with him. I'm looking forward to nice. to doing all this stuff. I added another little grain elevator in the next area too. Nice. So, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how this area is coming along, and the vast majority of it now is just dumping trees and grass all over the place. Yeah, which uh, gets old quickly. <laughs> it gets old quickly, but it gets done quickly. This is true. That's you know. The amount of times I've spent putting fences around houses. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey. So, so whatever, I don't what know. else have we done? Well, I don't know about spending time, but we spent some money earlier. We went to the... Oh, uh, you did. Yeah, some people will know the Railroad Memories auctions run by Sue Naus out of... Uh, I suppose they're out of Evergreen or whatever. Anyway, there's yeah. a big Railroad... Railroadiana? Railroadiana is, I think, what it's called? Yeah. Railroad memorabilia show. That, and swap meet, that I went to today with uh, Dusty and Jeff, my two bosses. So, I spent, I think, $30 in total. I bought um, a new copy of the Airbrake Catechism and a booklet of some cool folios and stuff from Steam Engines, including, I didn't realize, an elevation drawing from the PRRT-1. Um, oh. And some boiler stuff, which I'll share with you later, else because it's kind of cool to look at. Um, yes. I was the big loser for today, though, because I only spent thirty dollars. Does anybody else or anybody want to guess um, some of the other numbers that were spent? Here's today's biggest five hundred. Uh, higher, Milky. Five hundred. Higher. Oh is no! It in, okay, is it in the four digits or the five? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of them, I'm, I'm not going to say names, just because, you know, I guess I'll leave a little bit of mystery to it. Yeah. One of them spent uh, $120 on some drawings, and another $600 okay. on a Rio Grande Southern switch key. The only one that any of us have ever seen in person. Very rare. Wow. And then the other one spent wow. 700 and some dollars on a pair of Rio Grande marker lamps. So I Dang. lost. I lost big time with my thirty. <laughs> wow! Well, I don't think you did though. You, yeah, I feel. I feel as though I've won. Dollars. Yeah. One of the one of the guys. So I went to the the PN today, mm -hmm. which I haven't been aside from a business meeting in a couple of months, and it's really funny. It's really funny. Uh, because last time I was there. We got into this huge spat, you know, whenever politics gets brought up, it gets really interesting. Of course. Um, uh, we got into this huge thing, and then I left at the end of the day, because everybody left, and then I was busy, and then I was unwell, and then I busted my finger open and didn't show up. I didn't go to the PN for, like, almost oh, were, two months. Were they worried that you were mad at them or something? No, I was, I was, the whole time I was like, man, I hope they don't think that I'm, like, you know... I took that to heart or anything, and I finally got back, and everyone's like, oh, how are you, whatever. I'm like, I'm, I show them the scar yeah. on my hand, whatever. And I know I sit down at the business meeting, and I notice Roland, who is the former electrical committee chair, mm -hmm. going, he has, you know, new committee chair, question mark? Are you new committee chair, question mark? Ellis, question mark. And because I hadn't shown up, I... Uh, and I was supposed to take that throne, and so I saw him, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be here, I, I just had a bad run of things. And, you know, next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday, will you come in and sort of educate me? You know, I just just help me, walk me through some stuff, and let's see if we can get some stuff done on the layout. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure, absolutely. So I went there today, and he brought all his tools, his soldering iron and stuff, because I don't have any of that stuff. And, uh, and he walked me through putting track drops in. Nice. Because that's, that's what we had to do. There are three things, I mean, there are a few things that we had to do. And I actually have these things stuffed in my pocket. Why are, I'm gonna make like a, why are you guys Google still putting in this. track drops? The layout, it runs, right? Why are you putting in new ones? The layout, well, there are some sidings that just got put in, finally. Uh, oh, Okay. Uh, the layout isn't done. The last turnout went in recently, but there are still some sections of track that need power. Some turnouts still need to be power routed. They just never have gotten done. Gotcha. Um, 
And there are three things in particular that need work. There's the Blackstone Valley Grain, which is where I was working today. Uh, White River Junction needs power for uh, two new industries that just sprung up in some empty space. Uh, and there's a drawbridge down there that needs power, too. Hmm. Which we need to figure out a way to give it power in a way that still allows it to open and also possibly come up with a way to make it open uh, on command. Mm -hmm. Because that'd be really fun. That would be. Uh, of course, doing that with a little plastic drawbridge in HS scale, not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, no. So that's that's last on the list. Although there are a couple other things that have come up, like little crossovers that don't have power in the middle of them or something like that. And he was like, okay, have you ever done track drop? No, I haven't done track drops. I'm not even that good at soldering. He goes, how good are you at soldering? I said, well, I'm really rusty, and underneath the rust, there's wood. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a descriptor right there. <laughs> so, I was like, I soldered when I was in high school, and then I made, I, I soldered, like, one thing in college, and uh, nobody ever even told me that you're supposed to heat up the item and not the solder. Oh. So... Uh, so I basically had no idea what I was doing the entire time. Somehow, they, somehow the things I soldered did in fact work. They were just really ugly. Uh, and probably used way too much solder. Well. So, he got out this little six inch long piece of track that I now have with me because I said I would take it home and put it on the fridge. Uh... <laughs> And well, why do you have it he, with you? Why isn't it on the fridge? Well, I, I need to get a magnet for it. Damn it. Uh, and, well, I wanted it here as a show-and-tell item. Uh. Nah. Uh, and he soldered one. He went through the whole steps. Okay, you brush the side of it with this little tool just to clear off, you know, any paint or whatever. And then you take the wire, you snip the end of it, you put the solder on the wire, you put some flux on the rail, you put some solder on the rail... And then you, you know, you hold the wire against the rail with this tool here, and then you put the solder, solder iron down, make sure you don't melt the ties or yep. get solder on the rail top. Totally never right, done you know. either of those. And also make sure that you're soldering to the outside of the rail and not the inside. I've never done that uh, one before either. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> one of the guys, Don, D TJ, it was Don, he goes, oh yeah, I... I did track drops once, except I soldered them all to the inside of the rail. It took me a little while to figure out why things kept derailing. It's Oof. it's such a bummer uh, because you do that, and it's always the most beautiful soldering job you've done all day. The universe is like, yeah. you can have this one for now. Yeah, and then you try to drive something over it, and it goes poorly. <laughs> uh, I hope your children turn out poorly. <laughs> You know, it'd be, I, I just thought of what's the most awful thing you could say to someone if you walk up to someone and go, I curse your child. Uh, no, that was a, that was a Chris RTAA. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, listen to the Chris ones very much. Okay, I'm trying to find somebody else to watch. Oop, Schlick is in Kerbal Space for him in light of KSB2. I'm going to watch him. Oh. Uh. Yeah. And so I tried five different track drops, and they did get slowly better. And so then we went over there, we drilled some holes, we put in some drops, and I got underneath the layout to to see if I could figure out what, uh, you know, where do I connect these two? Is there a bus that runs along this siding that we're working on? Mm -hmm. And no. There are two drops that were currently on the siding, uh, because it had... It had existed for a while, and then it got extended to what it is now. And they were not even tied to the, the bus of the nearby main line. In fact, they were tied into St. Johnsbury Yard, which is on the other side of the backdrop, two and a half feet away. <laughs> so uh. they were strung from one side of the aisle, or not aisle, but island, to the other. <laughs> and I'm under there going, mm. why would you do this? And then I look, and the, the mainline bus ends there. <laughs> and there's a gap of several feet, and then it picks up again. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is why, I guess. We'll have to make a new bus for this. I can't believe you've done this. It was it was amazing to get under there. And also, we have these little light bulbs that are tied into the thing, so <laughs> that shorts are not catastrophic. Right. You know, if it, if it shorts, the light bulb lights up, just to give some resistance. All right. 
Uh, there's a light bulb under there, underneath St. John's Bar Yard, that is constantly lit up. Oh. <laughs> nice. And we do not know why. <laughs> nice. I was talking about it there, I was like, these bulbs are supposed to be off, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one that's on. And I went over to St. John's Bar, and people are working the yard. Like, is everything working okay over here? Yeah. What the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. Is it just an unwritten rule that the wiring on club layouts has to be com- a complete cluster? Yep. Uh... Even when one person does it. Yeah. Because, because well, it turns into, okay, we've got this much track. Yeah, but we want to have these sidings, and we want to do this, and all right, let me get out of there and change this, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, even when one person does it, even when that person is an electrical engineer, <laughs> it's, oh, man. Yeah. But, oh, but it wasn't just one person doing these things. So that makes it even better. Uh but nice. Yeah, so I have I have uh, begun to take the throne, and uh, it's not going too badly right now. It's not going too badly. You've taken the throne, the throne of uh, the thing that I forgot to talk about with the railroad show earlier that I posted a throne picture of. The throne of standards. I came, I came around a corner um, at the show earlier today and was met with the sight of this thing that I'm thinking Ellis is showing at this point. Uh, oh yeah, let me scroll up and grab it. I I'm coming around the corner. You know, uh, lantern, 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 can, can, lantern, can, lantern, can, lantern, can, lantern uh, cool stuff. And I turn and there's this clock staring at me. This beautiful clock. But the first two things I notice there's a pure keystone on the face, and then in Big letters on the glass front of it. Bureau of Standards Certified Railroad Time. It's like, I have to take a, cl- a picture of this. This is a beautiful clock, but more importantly, it is a meme in of itself. This is the like, the only thing better, or the only thing that can make this better are the, you know, alleged described angels standing astride K4s <laughs> in mural form behind the clock. Like, what the hell? This is wonderful. And it was 500 bucks, and it didn't work. Yeah, it wasn't even 500 bucks. I was really expecting it to be expensive, but I asked out of morbid curiosity. And I'll be honest, I was really, really tempted. It's like, uh, I could get a clock guy to look at it. I could get. I need to get my watch and my mantle clock looked at anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. But ultimately decided not. Man, if to. I had five hundred extra dollars, oh, dude, that that it's a it was a beautiful piece too. It's a really lovely this clock. Would be in my living room. Yes, he said it's an awesome conversation starter. It's like, yeah, I'll believe it. <laughs> Can I tell you about our Lord what? and Savior standards? Say no to standards. It's not even, yeah, it's not even the same standards, you know. Yeah. It it is. PRR, of course, and they're all about their standards. But the Bureau of Standards, it's like a double standard clock. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, and squared. But seriously. Yes. It is It is the clock of enduring standards. Full standards. It, it's like the clock straight out of the center of the world. Uh, one marketplace, uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The center of the world on clock. SP. Yeah. It's the most clock. We have the most clock. <laughs> clock. <laughs> Rock out with your clock out. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Anyone hold... else do uh, do stuff railroad related? Uh, yeah. Recently, I've been working on uh, my own dem of the WWF, the Wiscasset Waterville and Farmington Railway. Hey. Um. And so uh, I put a couple screenshots in there. Um, let me get one more that I'm looking it's so for. So cute! I love it so much. I know. I I'm really happy with how it's coming out. Um, how uh, how actually were we doing for time? Uh, I mean, we're about we're we're running a little long on this section, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, we're just gonna hit locomotive versus. Just curious. Like... You were saying, TJ. Um, I have been working on, I am up to main, uh, locomotive and machine, uh, which is about a third of the way down the line with my work. I have not textured anything because, uh, 
I've so. been working on <laughs> I've been working on figuring out the turf effects, figuring out where everything goes realistically. Yeah. Um, nice. And so I'm hopefully gonna get to on the center pretty soon. Depends on how much I can work on it. Hold on, I have one more screenshot that I like. Um, unmas, unmas. No más guapo. No, no more guapo. No more. I was, I was muy guapo. No más. No más. No more guapo. No más. There we go. I found it. Okay. Um, where's Discord? Okay. On your computer. Yes, <laughs> it is on my operating system. In somewhere. a hole at the bottom of the C. <laughs> there we go. It's on your C drive. Awesome. And that is all she wrote for the WWF. Um, hopefully, I get some better engines thanks to Milky at some point. Mm. Um. <laughs> No promises, though, because these engines are old. Yeah. Uh, they're from, like, Trains 04. They've just kind of been, like, hob like hobbled along yeah. into each version. They've given they've been given, like, the bare minimum to keep working in Trains 19. Yep. <laughs> uh, they still have a diesel engine spec, and they still uh, have weird sounds. But, you know what? We'll, hopefully we'll get there someday. Yeah, someday. <laughs> Broke. I mean, if you can fix if you can fix up number one, I'll definitely take it and use it in the or, horseman when I or, can. Worst case scenario, we're modeling the new number one. <laughs> 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 because at this point, one. at this point, it might be easier to do that than fix the old one. Mm -hmm. Make it from scratch. Yeah. Just want to make sure is my, anyway. is my mic working? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Because my headset just died on me. Like. 30 minutes in, so I had to transfer to the Bluetooth headphones and turn off. Press F to pay respects. Well, that's why, that's why I put push to speak on F. Okay. Okay. I, I've, done right. some, I've done some stuff. I uh, okay. saw a train last Wednesday. Nice. nice. That's about it for real world things. <laughs> I, I got some new model train stuff. Uh, one of my dad's coworkers had a bunch of stuff he was getting rid of, so now I have a bunch of O-Gage stuff and some HO stuff, too. Uh, no clue if any of it works. Yeah. There's, there's this old Lionel a Union Pacific uh -oh. GP9 and HO scale, but it's missing a wheel. It's just uh -huh. I have no clue if any of it works because I didn't bother to pull out my power pack from under my bed because it's tucked away in there in the back behind the dog bed. There's somebody aware of the Yeah. Yes. And I bought an N-scale Kato track so that... Nice. I intend to get one of the mini trains FMC locomotives so I need a place to run it so I bought the track pack and now I just need to buy the locomotive which sounds easier than it probably will be because, yeah. you know... I found the mini train stuff is so... It's so light. It's really yeah. difficult to keep things railed and your track work had better be flawless. Speaking of like which... Just, it, it's easier to use snap track for the mini train stuff. They're really nice models, but they, they're just so small and delicate. Small, 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 teeny weeny weeny. I hope, uh, I've been screwing around, and by screwing around, I mean I'm. Uh -oh. I made a mistake. Keep finding it to just ask. This is oh no! I'll press F to pay respects. Yeah. End to talk. Oh. I'm End to talk. He's dead, Jim. That's why you keep your headset charged, folks. Yeah. That's why Just you buy a wire. It's only plugged in. <laughs> My battery doesn't yeah. really work. <laughs> I've been screwing around in Blender. I've made this. It's uh, a work in progress, I swear. But. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, oh, this thing's adorable. Mm. I'll finish it one day. 
Give me that balloon stack. I, I see your blender <laughs> parts, and then I raise you mine. <laughs> because I've also been getting in the blender. <laughs> Spent so long in that damn cab. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. I'm gonna go fix my keybind real quick. <clears throat> Oh, that's right past 60. By the way. <laughs> Figure I can tell by. Yep, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it's real chonk. Yeah. The, the, the actual link's kind of a big fat. <laughs> and chonk. Chonk. Yeah. Guys. That's such an yeah. ugly Why are engine, the wheels too. So small. <laughs> yeah. I. Why are the driving wheels barely bigger than the, than the, than the pilot wheels? That's like, my question. unpopular opinion. White pass. Which one is this? Sixty nine. No, this is uh, nice. sixty one. Sixty nine. Wow. Nice. Hang on. Is this the one I'm thinking of? Um. Uh, no. Uh, oh, this is Stathi's engine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Still an ugly engine, but not as ugly yeah, as big, not as ugly as the one I was thinking of. I was thinking of sixty nine. Sixty nine is an ugly locomotive. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. No, you. It is. Hang on. Let me get a picture of it. It just doesn't. It it's too chonk. Yeah. It's too. I mean, this one yeah. looks like it. Yup, there it is. It's it's too go. chonk. It's it's got more boiler than it knows what to do with. Uh, well, and look headlight. At the, and look at the little. The headlight is bigger than the wheels. The headlight is <laughs> yes. smokestack. The headlight's almost as big as the goddamn cab. Oh. Yikes! And then look at the pilot. It's so little. And then right. here's the chunk. You know what this is? This is stanced. Two chunks. Yes. Stance nation. Yeah. Hello flush. Get hot. Actually, wait. I found uh, excuse me. God, this thing looks so stupid. <laughs> this thing looks so stupid. It's like... It's Wait, like hold you up. told someone to build a locomotive, but they had no idea that driving wheels were supposed to be there, big. There's a bigger, there's a bigger picture of it. Yeah. So yeah. Looks like oh the Bachman God. models. Yeah. yeah. It does, I, I, actually. I, I think Oof. the Bachman models may have taken some inspiration from the White Pass. I would not be surprised. Bachman, stop. <laughs> Bachman. <laughs> Bachman's coming for you. <laughs> Bachman, Bachman felt, uh, what is it? He, he was feeling rather insignificant at the size of that boiler, and so decided to make his own. <laughs> yeah. He's compensating for something. Can we make that a segment on the podcast? The Adventures <laughs> of Bachman. <laughs> when, last we saw, when last we saw Bachman. <laughs> he was making a boiler that was way too big. Thank <laughs> you. Way too big for his cheat skill, free for the engine. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but yeah. anything else that we've got? Because we should move on to yeah. locomotive versus I've got one more thing to say before we do. Uh, I don't uh, have which is that, Which is that, on Friday, feeling a little bit bored and a little bit kind of comedic, I, spent, I logged onto the Iron Horseman YouTube account <laughs> And I spent the entire day in the stream chat for the Strasbourg camera. <laughs> nice. And in that in that time, we discussed naming engines and things like that. It was actually pretty entertaining. Wait, was this uh, like the day after? 6-11? It was. It was two days after Six Eleven showed up. So it was Friday. Six Eleven came in on Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was it that long so. ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six yeah. Eleven coming in was fun because there were some highlights to that stream chat that I. Oh yeah, recorded. there were. I mean, there were. Uh, you included. There were a bunch of people from the Horseman uh, Discord in there, including Terminus fans and whatever, uh, which sort of made me think about hmm, what if I joined as whatever and just started calling the engines by their names and so see how people react. Uh, <laughs> you know. And it got some conversation. You know, it got some. It got some good reactions and some bad reactions. Uh, but what the engine general, or the horseman? Like, Steve Lowe the, shakes his head. The, One the dude way the, too hung the, up on you know, the naming, etc. But we we did go through. We had a rather interesting conversation about what to name six eleven. Uh, the motive. Which, which at the end of the day we settled on Jane, 
uh, and most of the other J's got names that started with J. Most of them. This is uh, John, Jacob, <laughs> Schmidt. We, 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 what is that one? Schmidt. We do, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have uh, a few that are left unnamed, but most of them are, are J's now. Are, are named. Are named name. with J names. Most of the J's uh, are J's. John, well, no, Jacob, I mean, I meant they had J Schmidt. names. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Speaking of J's, there isn't one in Locomotive Versus this week. <laughs> F. But oh, wait, what well, we do have on <laughs> Thank you. I just wanna... In one corner. Oh, also we didn't we, we, we didn't figure out who's gonna support which. Oh, whoops. I'm up for supporting I one. Um anybody have a preference? I can use a losing streak with the Niagara. <laughs> You're gonna be the Niagara or the Niagara? See uh, the, the American. Okay, okay. now I'll be the Mexican boy. Da, 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 da. Oh. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay, Alco boy. <laughs> <laughs> we uh. Okay, so in one corner, we have the New York Central what? Niagara. If you guys want to get pictures for me. Yeah. And in the other corner. We have the NDAM C four eight four. Yeah. Uh, colloquially, co- yeah, colloquially known as the Niagara. Yep. Uh. They were both Alco, so they should be fairly similar. Can I have your Alco? Alcos. Let me see if I can get a half. There's the half. We did some picture of mine. I think. It, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty it. blown up too. So. Yeah. yeah. Let me, actually, I think I, I think I found a slightly better one. Okay. It's a very similar. Wait a minute, is that the same picture? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Here you oh, go. Oh, Here's the picture that I found of the Niagara. Okay. Uh, that's not too bad, except open. for it's a little bit small. But that's fine. It's a little bit small, but yours is a little bit blur. That headlight looks huge. Yep. Yeah. At least China. it isn't a white pass engine. Yeah, it kind of looks like the uh, <laughs> 3025. Yeah, it looks it like a giant 3025. Now also, I need it's, to pull the up. fact that it's 3042 doesn't really help. No. no. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Who do we want to go first here? Uh, America, because we put America first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. America. Subtle. F- yeah. Subtle. <laughs> nice. Listen, listen. This is what it comes down to. If the NDAM engine loses, they pay for the wall. Yeah. Okay. This is what decides the wall right here. And if the NDAM engine wins, then they cheated. They <laughs> cheated. Yeah. No, we give them Texas back. We, we give them Texas back. <laughs> Bye, Kabon. Kabon wants to know your location. Yeah. Oh, let's or we go. give them new. We give them New Mexico. <laughs> okay. That's, All right. That it's already working. named after yeah. you. We we don't we don't uh, care about New Mexico. Mexico. We can get rid of that. Oh, then the Kubrick and Toltec can be a bi country where? Yeah, it can cross the border <laughs> eleven times. <laughs> passport. It's fine. Yep. Your passport's checked every single time. Yep. <laughs> Welcome. The trip now takes but two stra- days. But strangely, <laughs> only when you cross back from the U- Mexico into the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I forgot to talk about that, but that that that's unimportant. That I suppose could count Osier's, as news. And Osir's food, the sampling has been a little diff- is a little different. <laughs> By the way, okay, so. who 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 wants you to go first? All right, Ni- the Niagara's gonna go first. Damn it! Not the Niagara. So that's me. So Milky, you go. Okay, I thought you said the Niagara. Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought Milky. Were... I thought Milky was the Mexican. Oh, sorry. Right, sorry. <laughs> I knew I was doing something wrong. All right, See. Dachshund, go okay. ahead. Let's. Let's. Oh. Ooh. Is he dead? Hold. Make sure you no, hold down that key you. binding. <laughs> uh, I'm bad at this. Holding it down. Under fuel yeah. capacity. Okay, um... Uh... <laughs> oil, I swear to God, yep. it's oil. I swear to God. 
God I'm damn. 90% sure these engines were oil fired. Damn. Uh, Gorb. Damn. <gasps> okay, pick something else. Water capacity. Uh, believe it or not, um, 15,000 gallons. 18,000. God damn it. Chonk tender. And if you big. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, that 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 things. come to bite you in the butt, Ada. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, here we go. Ooh, I'm gonna get yikes for being ch firebox area. Firebox area. Firebox area. Area of firebox. Four hundred and thirty-seven square feet. Five hundred and three square. Feet. Damn. Holy cow. Hmm. All right. Remember the Alamo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this ain't it, folks. <laughs> okay, a uh, great area. 77.30. 101. All right. Evaporative Continue. heating surface. 4,185. 4,823. You know, I didn't realize these engines were that different. Yeah. yeah. I guess they are. Well, we've learned something today. Yeah. And yeah. that something is that Mexico sucks. Carry on. Yep. <laughs> See, I <laughs> wanted to say that, but I decided against it. Yeah, that's probably wise. We, we know I'm not running for office, though, so... Yeah, I was going to say, you get a pass wise. for... Not good reasons. Yeah. Superheating surface. Okay, 1,721 square feet. 2,073. Oof. Holy cow. So, Weibold, you're just furthering the Colorado Air Museum's reputation that we yeah. cemented so many podcasts yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> Visit Golden Colorado. Redacted, yeah. redacted, redacted. 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 <laughs> hey, I didn't name it. <laughs> You said it, not me. <laughs> Combined okay. heating surface? Oof. 5,906 square feet. 6,896 square feet. I could have never predicted that. Yep. Uh, oh, man. Evaporative heating surface divided by cylinder volume? 245.54. Two fifty four point nine eight. Oh my God! Really? Even that? Yeah, that's 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 the one I expect to throw a wrench into things. Come on. I wasn't sure. I was just like, ah, let's yeah. just go with it. All right. Well, seven nothing. Keep killing them. No, no. I guess. Seven nothing. Oh, R.I.P. Screw it. Let's be at Mexico City by night. You nightfall. monster! You monster! Yeah. Uh, Robert Lane has seen our computation. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Might be the quickest yeah. time to Robert Lane has seen power computation that we've ever had. Yeah, that's mm. true. Exciting, right? Uh, 19,735. 27,775. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Same as above, plus superheater percentage. Ooh. 25,400... 58. 36,108. Man, I'm going to need to pull uh, style points out of my ass for this one. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, this is a like, runaway <laughs> game. Yeah. This looks I really like, expected them to be closer. This looks like yeah. the Boston Red Sox. This oh, season. Well. Hashtag <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> Hell yeah. Same as above, but substitute firebox area for great area. One hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred and twenty. One hundred seventy nine thousand hundred twenty three. Yes, yeah, so we've definitely solidified the idea that the Niagara's were very good northern. Yeah. <laughs> this is just sad. God bless America. <laughs> this is so sad. I like to play Desposito. Even though it's the central. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Power all one. 
Powell won. 48,199. 49,000. God damn it. <gasps> There it is, ladies and gentlemen. How yep. the turntables. Whoa. All right. <laughs> I don't know that anybody right, else. No. Okay. Um. Mm. I'm going to have the link about this one <laughs> with my one point. Be Pick careful. Very <laughs> carefully. Red <laughs> light. Well, Oi. I know some things. Uh, what? what's your minimum weight of whale? Here we go. 115 pounds per yard. 100 pounds. Oof. Yeah. That's still not that light, but no. that's better. <laughs> God damn it, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> uh, I think Milky's yeah. cracked the code, though. Take what you can. Okay, what is your weight on Tribers? 275,000 pounds. 240,000 pounds. Hey. What's your Macarena. engine weight? <laughs> 471,000 pounds. 387,000 pounds. Tender rodent weight. 337,000 pounds. Yes. Uh... 242,400 pounds. Okay, yeah, what... tender is massive. Yeah. What, what's your total engine and tender weight? 808,000. Okay, mine is 629,400. I specifically avoided this for this. <laughs> Again, I could have, I could have, uh, you know, figured that one out. I, you know, I... Yeah. yeah, I didn't predict that that uh, that victory that, there. That, that cow could pray. Yeah, literally. What's your overall wheelbase? Ninety-seven point two one feet. Eighty-six point three one. So what I'm getting out of these is they just, you know, they set the Niagara <laughs> printer to ninety percent yeah. scale <laughs> and printed a Niagara. Yeah. Ooh. And send it to Mexico. See, yeah. no, no, it's well, the, see, the... Uh, it's the change in latitude. It oh, actually right, makes yeah, it sorry. shrink slightly. <laughs> yeah, I. It's the extra. It's the added pressure. Yeah. Of the, uh, you know, hot and humid air down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I was gonna say there's just the, you know, a big toll gate down there, and you can only fit certain <laughs> things through the toll gate. They couldn't fit a full size Niagara through. Yeah. What is your weight zero of driving wheelbase throw ball engine wheelbase? Point four two. Toss up. Mine is um point four. God damn it. Ooh. Wait, so and one. we're back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look. Driver diameter. Seventy. Seventy nine. God damn it. Yep. Big one. Chalkers. Boiler pressure. Okay, this one's a bit of an odd one. Um, for for a particular reason that we get to in a second. 255.30. Where the hell did the 4.30 come from? <laughs> Metric conversion? Yeah, probably. 275. Goddamn. Do they use the metric system in Mexico? I don't know. I have no idea. I know they're not America, yeah. so probably. Bobby. Tractive huh. effort. What is that they're using for? Uh, 58,126 pounds. 61,560. Wow, that was closer than I expected. Also, yeah. we have crossed uh, we have crossed the 20-point threshold. Oh, already? <laughs> yeah. Mexico well, does I mean, use the metric been... system. Okay. They do? Yep. No, that makes that, sense. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. So says Google. Okay. Honestly, it does surprise me a little bit. Yeah. Well, they haven't been to the moon, so they're sort of entitled yeah. to it. This feels like a bad idea, but what's your loco base idea? Yes! 974? 5,582. Check! Holy cow! That's a pretty big one. Why? Why? It's also does... what she said. Why yeah, did why? the Mexican engine get Ooh. entered first? Ha! And by so much! <laughs> yeah! 
Like, if they were close, I would understand, because I assume he was just putting in putting in Northerns, but he was just <laughs> like, yeah, let's, you know, we're getting close to He's just like, engines you know, here. F the Central. I'm not doing this yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how the other Northerns compare in terms of local base. Yeah, ID. Anyway. No. All right, Milky. Um, Try not to kill yourself again. Yeah. You're who behind trying. by six points. Uh, <laughs> Go for a touchdown. Why did okay. I do this? Uh, what's your factor of adhesion? 4.47. Yes! 4.13. 4.47 is not good. No. no. I thought the Niagara's were supposed to be good. And she... I mean, they're pretty good <laughs> otherwise, it seems. Yes. Yeah. They just didn't get the weight right. Yeah. Okay, what is their engine wheel base then? Forty eight point four two feet. Mine it wait what? Wait. <laughs> Did I hear that right? Four eight point four two Okay. Okay. I thought I heard something else. Uh mine is forty five point oh nine. Slightly smaller. What, what's your triber wheelbase? 20.50. Minus 18.25. Small. I had it. Yeah. <laughs> it what? You blew it, Earthman. <laughs> you flew too close, Icarus. <laughs> you, you tried. You tried. Uh, what year were you built? That's 1945. 1946. Yeah. <laughs> Again, they had the Niagara's and went, maybe we could make these a little smaller. Yeah. Copy. Uh, paste. They let some of the air out. Uh, <laughs> this may be the a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this may be the dumbest question I've ever asked in this person. Uh -oh. Tom Brady threw it uh, all the way over the border. Please ask. How many were built? 24. 32? <laughs> yes. Damn it. I was really hoping for a 25. <laughs> What's better than 24? 25. Okay. Alright, Milky, you're one point behind. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, what's your number in class? <laughs> 24. 32. <laughs> okay, what was that about I'm being behind? I'm going to these M&Ms before Madison comes in and sees them. Hold on. Uh, who won that one? I did. We're at 32. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wait, what are you hiding before Madison sees them? Nothing. Shut up. Okay. Hey, wait. Uh, and I already know okay. who the <laughs> builders are, so I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, that would be just yeah. here. You go. You know what? Let's hear the style points. How many of you survive? <laughs> that was... <laughs> you know damn well. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Two of me survive. Uh, yes. Those. Okay. Yeah. More than two of you survive, Milky. Two Niagara's survive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when what? were you retired? Don't two, don't two Niagara survive? Uh. There's the one I have no idea. Weibold, what barn did you go to and find them? Well, there, no, no, there's the one at IRM, and then there's the one that's rusted out and horrible looking, right? The hell? I don't think there are any survivors. <laughs> no, I don't. I know there is one. No. I think you're thinking oh, of, I'm thinking of the northern. Or it's a. It's not a. Yeah, it's it's a mountain, not the northern. Oh, the Mohawk. Yes. Wait. I have no idea when these were retired. What is this? Wait, 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 wait. What is this? I am confusion. Is there one at the New Hope and Ivy League? Yes, what is this? that's the one. I, that's one of them I was talking about. No. Yeah. That's yeah. Me. Is yeah. that a Niagara? Yeah, it is. Did, wait, did we ever settle this debate? We had this, this was, debate years ago. You know, this was this was a point of contention. Did we ever figure it out? Yeah, I think we did. I don't, I don't think so. Hang on. Okay, fine. Uh, just settle it fast. I gotta get the... <laughs> I'm not seeing any other 
like pictures of it aside from one where it claims to be the Niagara. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm also not seeing any. Okay, hold my beer. Either yeah. either way, Milky wins. Doesn't matter. Yeah, way, Milky wins. moving on. Uh, I'll keep looking into this just because I'm curious now. But okay. Uh, but anyways, if I had the okay. If I had to guess, you were retired at some point in the 50s. I was retired in 1965. Which is so, why they didn't even bother looking. Yeah. <laughs> and also, they were all immediately cut up because of the New York Central. Yep. Uh, Thanks, son. Yeah. I, Thanks, Pullman. He does get a point for having smoked flex, yeah. though. Yeah, he does. That's fair. Uh, um, does Milky get a point for not having a centipede tender because F those things? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the New Hope and Ivyland engine is a Niagara. Ah, there are there are no surviving New York Central ones. There were no. <laughs> there were no yeah, that's my mistake. I was thinking of the uh, Mohawk. Okay. Yeah, there are two of those. Yeah. Why is it only those ones? Why did we get the lame? That yeah, man, I want a J three. Cool. I want a J three. Give me, give me Dreyfus. Give me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. C. No, give me Inverto Bat. <laughs> give me Inverto Bat. <laughs> the Bath. Inverto Mercury. Bat, trust anyone? <laughs> the Inverto Bath trust. <laughs> to save the Mercury, because like real Mercury, poison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, what else have these engines got going for them? Headlight. Congrats. Having a what is what is the deal with your headlight? I don't I know. Why is it like that, and is there actually an advantage? Because I think not. No. No. Mine is weird, just... and I'm I'm gonna lose if I don't throw out something. My, mine is just fucking gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I feel like the yeah. the Niagara one's weird, but I really don't want to give a <laughs> yeah. point in terms of headlights to Milky because that's just stupid looking. <laughs> Yeah, he, does, he doesn't have a headlight. He has a headlight. <laughs> exactly. yeah, Mexico deserves no points in terms of headlights because, good God, <laughs> yeah, I award you no they're, points. They're both equally terrifying. <laughs> Although I do like the look of the uh, the Mexican headlight the more. Than I like the. Yeah. the I like it. If, I don't. If they had shrunk down the headlight when they shrunk down the rest of the engine. I like it if it were railroad that we, took a yeah. narrow view. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. The NAM it, does have a history of doing that, don't they? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It took a narrow gauge locomotive and converted the standard gauge. So uh, yeah, they K twenty seven. Yeah. Ooh. They also. The uh, Rio Grande also sold them a coach, and then the superintendent of the Rio Grande heard about them selling this coach and went, why did you sell them that one? That's the really nice one. Quick, renumber the coaches so that when they come to get it, they take this crappy one instead. <laughs> and okay. the Mexicans nice. never asked. They never found out. Nice. Nice. This is rude. Rio Grande, a bunch of stand-up guys. Until yeah. now. <laughs> why, did, why did you sell this one? This was our nice one. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? Do we have anything else? I don't, I don't know enough about it. I can't personally pick anything, out, pick anything out of these engines, although we're looking at the fireman side on both of them, so I can't really, you know. Yeah. I'm stumped. I don't know what else to ask. If I could ask some questions, uh, oh boy. I can't really think of anything though. There's, no, oh, I there's should nothing probably be that, looking like, at these, huh? There's nothing that makes me go. Hmm, I wonder. Actually, you know what? I do have a question. And it's a more statistics question. Okay. Uh, what are you? What are the sizes of your cylinders? Um, mine are um. Oh, cylinders. Uh, twenty-five point five by thirty-two. Mine's twenty-five by thirty. Same that I should have asked. Oh, wow. Hey, wow. All right. Niagara gets that point. I expected them to honestly. I expected them to be the same size, with how the yeah. the other stuff came out. But wow, that's actually fairly significant. Did Baldwin build the NYC ones? 
No, they are all Alco. Huh. And mine... Mine are all Alco, but the locomotive page says Sebel, and I'm kind of curious as to... That's interesting what... that it says that, because I just found one that said it was a bald one. Oh, okay, maybe they did. I think they might have split them. Uh, hold up. I w I... I... Uh... Oh, wait, sorry, the, the Niagara's? Yeah, it says a couple okay, of the, yeah, that, a couple of the Niagara's sense. were Baldwin built. That makes more sense. That makes more sense because I was like, "No way in hell the <laughs> New York Central let Baldwin touch one of their." <laughs> yeah, no. no. But yeah, I did say barriers, but the only one that I could find was Alco. But I, Alco. If I could be a night or, yeah. I mean, they were being built for export. They're just here. Have a design. Yeah. Here, do this. Have a long-running theory that whenever any builder made engines for export, they would just let the engineering interns loose on them. Like, here, you want to try something experimental? Do it on this engine. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so you want to make problem. a Niagara, but just slightly smaller. Yeah. I like the loop engines. They've got just weird stuff on them. Everything's just done a little differently. The Niagara is the result of the designers going, we're going to turn this thing up to 11. And then the yeah. Niagara is like, maybe turn it back down. And <laughs> we'll go back down to 10. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, I think that's it then. Yeah. If nobody else can come up with anything, that means it's 1617. The Niagara took it. But that's just Are you barely. kidding? Damn it. I'm not kidding. Oh, jeez. Well. Avocados from Mexico. <laughs> Damn it, no. Well, bye, Graham. I threw it away. I had it and I <laughs> threw it away. Bye, Graham. <laughs> bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Hope you find <laughs> your dad. I just hope uh, that anyone who's trying hey, to know, visit New Mexico or Graham in the near future uh, renews their passport. Yeah, but you got to get the little star on it now. Right. Also, uh, Time to funny go ready. story, uh, New Mexico, the state, is older than Mexico. In yeah. The yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. It wasn't named after the country of Mexico. Really? Yeah, really. Huh. I read that the other day. I was like, oh, the more you know. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. So, enter this law straight into the spreadsheet. Yep. Oh man, you thought you, you had a good you, thing you, going, you tried, too. You tried, and then you gave me the ball. R.I.P. Yeah, I went to the bathroom, and I came back, and the runaway game was now, like, anyone's game. <laughs> Tied, yeah. yeah. I wonder what could have tipped those scales back, though. I really wonder. You know, I'm sure there are a couple things in there that we didn't touch on yeah. that could have done it. Never did power I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe one of the other powers, uh, maybe, I mean, there's always, uh, the weight computation that I like. <laughs> uh, what else would be another one? I don't know. But there, there were options, surely. Uh, anyway. Don't call me Shirley. I, God damn it, <laughs> I knew someone was gonna say that. Anyway. One of these uh, days. I've not been giving out points this episode, but honestly, several people should have them. <laughs> you especially. I was going to say, I should probably have several, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what, what was the one in the middle of the challenge that nobody caught but you? I just heard a subtle, god damn it. <laughs> oh, it was remember. like, you know, uh, I think it was something to do with the Macarena. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I said, like, you know, hey, and you went Macarena. <laughs> Hey, Macarena. All right, so let's uh, let's head down at least close to Mexico for a minute, and uh, actually go somewhere even more desolate and uh, disappointing, Oklahoma. Uh, unfortunately, they were planning to make a not unfortunately they were planning, but unfortunately the planning for a. Uh, 
an extension of the Heartland Flyer that would end up going north into, I believe, Kansas and meeting with the uh, Southwest Chief has been delayed due to the fact that the Stillwater Central Railroad failed to meet their deadline for establishing a pilot program uh, to provide this daily passenger service. Wait, did we so, do both? Oh, sorry, that's oh. right. Uh keeping us in line. Oh, sorry, no, this is this is different. This is not the Amtrak thing. This is Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So this is different. <laughs> there was gonna... another thing. All right, let's let's do that real quick. Apparently, Oklahoma has more than one passenger rail thing in the works, which really? stuns me. Uh, right. Oklahoma, that's what, like one per person then? Yeah, I guess. Huh. One per two million cows. <laughs> uh, They're all, that's what the articles don't say. They're all just stock trains. Yeah. It's a daily passenger train. Right. Uh, passenger. Seventeen to sixteen. All right, let's cast our votes. Sorry. For uh, Niagara and Niagara. Uh, I really don't know which one to vote for. Yeah. I, have I actually, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to vote for the Niagara because it is a very, very good engine. It's sort of like the pinnacle of Northerns. I want to see, you know, despite oh, the fact that the Niagara UP did farmers beat want it, to know your location. I know, I know, I know. You guys, uh, for us uh, right there. Yeah. I know it is. God forbid. Uh, but seriously, it's a damn good locomotive. And yeah, it is. Yeah, the the Niagara beat it out mostly because they were more built and it is lighter. But also, I see, for the it. most part, for the most part, the yeah, the the power statistics, the you know, the Niagara especially because they were built in '45, you know, yeah, uh, it's like the end all be all. Uh, certainly, Alco knew what they were doing with Northern. So oh, yeah. Whether or not you think the FEFs are better, or whatever. Mm. We don't have a slot in locomotive versus, so nobody suggests anything right now. But <laughs> that is a good idea. The anyway, thefts. so my vote is going to go to the Niagara. Yeah, you know, I think I'll follow you, actually. I I like the Niagaras. They're very distinct looking. Even if Senate Pete Tenders are garbage. My vote I is so. for the Niagara. Niagara. Out of pity? Uh, No, I just, I don't know, I like them better. I like to look at least for them better. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. That's All right. right. Anyway, sorry. Back to back to cargoes. So, Stillwater Central was supposed to do this pilot program for daily service between uh, Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So that's cool. I hadn't heard about it until now, and unfortunately, we are talking about it being delayed. So. Well. No news is good news, I guess. Uh, the Stillwater Central would be required to pay the state $2.8 million in liquidated damages. Woo! Uh, so, yeah. Which is great for Oklahoma because, you know, they are broke. Uh, so, Bro you know. Broke-lahoma. Broke-lahoma. <laughs> Bro There's the episode Bro title right there. Yeah, there we go. I've uh, my original error. title was Across the Parking Lot, but Broke-lahoma is better. Where the I think a mistake was made. Across the plains? Where the money's not anyway. going to the trains. Exactly. Ooh, yeah. uh, you know where else the money isn't going to the trains? Well, necessarily. Where is At that? these New York City stations. The Comptroller has named the city's most deteriorated subway stations in their newest report. Uh, revealing that 441 of the city's 472 subway stations, that's 93%, were allegedly not in good repair, with 65% of platform edges virtually crumbling. Ooh. That's, uh, in addition, about 24% of all structural components, like stairs, platforms, and ventilation in Manhattan's 150 stations were in poor condition. And... Uh, in about 94% of Brooklyn's 170 stations, they were in less than desirable shape. None of the Bronx's 70 stations were up to snuff, the report also oh, God. concluded. And the structural components in 45% of the stations in, in Queens showed rare and tear. 
wear and tear. So, uh, the most rickety stations, the uh, top five offenders were Cypress Avenue and Westchester Square in the Bronx, uh, 90th Street, Elmhurst, and 36th Street in Queens, the 207th stop in Manhattan. In Manhattan. Bleh. <laughs> uh, all of which have seen a rapid deterioration in structural components since the last survey just seven years ago. Ugh. So, uh, there are, is clearly a lot of unsettlement with the MTA uh, at this point in time, to the to the point where uh, there's currently a minor battle going on between the the uh, New York City Transit Authority, the MTA, and the unions. And the most recent deal has been firmly rejected by the employees. Mm. So, I don't know. But, as always, things in New York, when it comes to the transit side, are, uh, well, they're in an interesting spot. As long as you don't have to ride them. If you do have to ride them, then the I wouldn't necessarily call it interesting. Mm. Speaking of things failing, having money. Oh no, oh no, is this 1309? Yes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, Maryland 1309 halts again for need of Take a shot. <laughs> Take a shot. <laughs> oh, God. We're so are they out of money again? It would be really funny if it wasn't true. Work on 1309 has come to a halt as funding is... Uh. More. Womp, 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 womp. Hey, it's the, 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 the music. Yeah. Like the Mario dying music? No. Oh, the curb your enthusiasm? Anyway, I don't know. There's a lot of music that can be inserted here, but none of it is good. No. It's all sort of sarcastic. It's all a dumpster fire. Speaking of things that don't even. Things that are bad and Western Maryland. Recently, oh, no. there was an audit <laughs> of Western Maryland. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> and uh, things aren't looking good. Um, Have they been? No. <laughs> no, they haven't been looking good since things they got 1309. are not looking up. They uh, recently had an audit from the tax bureau, um, and it turns out that their whole, uh, like financial future is based off of them getting the railroad running or the 1309 running oh, really? for the railroad yeah um so they are just kind of screwing themselves something yeah. something thing. eggs and really big stupid broken baskets <laughs> yeah so well there's... you know who else got a tax audit oh Milky. oh no oh yeah the mount hood got <laughs> oh yeah the, the Mount Hood has had their fair share of tax problems with with the tax man. Uh, with the county, specifically. Yeah. Uh, it, okay, Hood River County is preparing to move forward with the seizure of Mount Hood River property for failing to pay property taxes mm -hmm. for the last three years. Thank you, Iowa Pacific. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not... Uh, uh, Her River County. Okay. They aren't saying when. They say we will seize the yeah. property. They aren't saying when. We yeah, will they seize saying... the property. Asterisk. Yeah. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, they... It says in the books we own this, but we just you know. Yeah. Who, who knows? I'm gonna get you yeah. eventually. Yep. I'm like the loose specter of death. But uh, they, uh, it's a mess right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They owe two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's actually Personally, not as bad as it could be, especially yeah. in terms of railroads. Yeah. Yeah. Owing three years worth of back taxes on a railroad, a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why is it that Iowa Pacific does this? It seems like yeah. a recurring theme. But Iowa Pacific is like G and W, except yeah. they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> no, they're right, G and W, but how you describe them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're actually G and W. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pulled out the map. It was me yeah. the whole time. <laughs> it was I. <laughs> you know who else isn't paying? Yeah. Oh no, West Virginia. West Virginia. Uh, Maryland Transit apparently has been running 
some sort of commuter service into West Virginia. Uh, the Mountaineer State uh, have been warned that the... Oh, wait, hold on. West Virginia, for the for many years, the state of West Virginia paid nothing for the Mark commuter rail service that carries hundreds of residents to jobs in Maryland and Washington, D.C. every day. For the last two years, officials in the Mountaineer State have been warned that the gravy train would soon end <laughs> that they had better compensate Maryland more fully for the six trains, three eastbound and three westbound, that Mark oh, smart. to and from the eastern panhandle of the cities of Harpers Ferry, Duffields, and Martinsburg. Duffields. Uh, and Duff. Duffields. Duffields. Uh, and um, West Virginia has uh, not paid them anything. Ooh. So, so uh, MDOT is now planning to eliminate four of those six trains. Ooh. Because the state of Maryland, quote, cannot continue to absorb the cost of transit services provided outside the state at the expense of Maryland taxpayers. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, yeah. West Virginia, you've got all that mountain beauty. You should all, try to make some money. On that tourism revenue that you're yeah. like, spending towards the Camir train. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently nobody in the area is getting paid because uh, we didn't cover this last week, but the articles cropped up last week about the miners' strike in Kentucky. Oh boy! Uh, yeah. yeah, there were miners blocking uh, blocking coal trains because they were not being paid. Yeah, I, and, I know that uh, feeling. You just bought stylish yeah. back to yeah. school clothes oh, at Savers. Oh, oh. There's a video. Did. Turn it off. Pause. Yep. Thank you. Uh, it was going to be some advertisement. Now, now, let me put you in, in the situation here. You are a presidential candidate. One with policies that would not typically be looked upon highly in a typically fairly conservative state such as Kentucky. You see these miners out there protesting. And uh, you, you like protesting yourself. You have a history of doing it. What do you do for these miners to really show them that you support them. Think about it. They oh, they haven't no. been paid. Oh, They're probably no. kind of hungry. Order. Bernie Sanders. Oh God. Ordered eighteen pizzas <laughs> from Pizza Hut to be sent to the protesting miners. Nice. And, All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, lots of lots of people. You know, we're, the campaign trail is is on, ladies and gentlemen. We're a year away from the election, but we're going. Uh, and lots of people have said, you know, we'll help you to the miners. Yeah, and, haven't you know, done People like them, but not too many people have sent them food. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's huh. given so, them a good right. supply. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, yeah, fair Milton enough. staff said the Pizza Hut was, quote, tickled to death to be the pizza chain chosen to deliver the tickled order. Tickled to death. Uh, tickled to death. I asked them, you know, uh... Pizza Hut manager Judah Middleton said she personally took the call and was surprised to hear it was actually from Sanders' campaign. Quote, I asked them, uh, we took the phone number and they said this is Bernie Sanders' campaign. We took his credit card on the phone and everything. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. 15 huh. pizzas. I mean, but honestly though, can you really vote for the guy when he sent the Pizza Hut? Yeah. Come on. Well, what was Get in the Domino's or something. <laughs> Mine closure left nearly 200 oh, miles the way out. It's playing the video jobs. again. It's playing the video again. Turn off. Hey man, I might have to sell anyway. the night strike with pizza. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure for those guys, if the, I don't know how long yeah. the the strikers have been out there, but I'm sure for those guys, that was the best pizza they yeah. ever had. Yeah. So you're saying uh, if I, so you're saying if I sit on the railroad track, someone will send me pizza. <laughs> I mean, for good reason. Yeah. I guess if you're, you know. I don't think most people will send you pizza. I mean, there are some people definitely crazy enough to send to send pizza to people that are randomly sitting on railroad tracks. And I, I know, I think I know who those people are, or at least one of them. Uh, uh, and uh, their name is Florida Man. Oh God! <laughs> but uh, we have we have new adventures of Florida Man. New adventure. Last week, is, that Bach, right. is this Bachman's uh, arch nemesis? Yeah. Like, yeah, can we maybe. start writing comics with Bachman uh, and Florida Man? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a uh, quote mysterious driver 
took a train owned by the Florida Northern Railroad for a ride in downtown Ocala on Saturday, breaking the fence as they exited the rail yard. Actually, did we cover this already? You're, I think you're we covered crazy. This already. Nobody robs trains uh, anymore. I feel like we could. Yeah. Anyway, I think uh, we had something similar probably a year ago yeah. with the NSF. No, I feel like we had something really similar. Uh, yeah, I this was covered like a week yeah, I, I think we, you know, the driver went ten miles. <laughs> yes, we did. We did cover this. Okay. The locomotive. Ten miles. Uh. So that's kind of impressive. Clearly, you don't get ten miles by not knowing what you're doing. Yeah. So I'm kind of impressed. Uh. <laughs> but, Unless you get it rolling. Then you get yeah. 10 miles not knowing what you're doing because you can't but stop. But also, uh, they don't know who did it. There's still a mystery? <laughs> the person, oh, I thought the Florida man to... is still at large. Florida man. Oh my god. <laughs> Florida man yes. does it again. Florida man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get away with that stuff if you're not in Florida, though. Yeah. Serious. Uh, if, you, if you are, for example, in a more tighten up place, for example, maybe Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, and you make a fuss on a train, for example, an Amtrak train, <laughs> yeah, and you uh-oh. cause a delay uh-oh. for a whole of 28 minutes, uh, this woman got into a fight Ooh. and tangled with two employees back on August 6th. She has been ordered to pay nearly $3,600 <laughs> in, restitution for Am- in restitution to Amtrak for the delay. Wow. Uh, I believe this was on the Lakeshore Limited. So, usually, usually it's yeah, attack. be nice to the poor Amtrak staff. <laughs> yeah, they already get enough trouble. Uh, also, the Lakeshore Limited is home to the most discontented Amtrak personnel that I've ever had the pleasure of of meeting or knowing. Uh, mm. Like almost everything else, almost every other. Uh, Uh, like, time where I've interacted with Amtrak staff. They've been all smiles, all friendly. Even when we were stuck in the middle of the desert, they were great people. On the Lake Shore Limited, they're just angry. Yeah. They're just unhappy people. I feel as though this is and an I, East Coast thing. I, yeah. I guess, but I've never had the problem on, like, the Down Easter or the Regional, you know? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, but if we're going to talk about East Coast railroads, right? Uh, there is an extension happening, a plan that is going on. Uh, and in fact, that is expanded service, extended service to Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, and Greenfield. That is trains north. So you know how the Amtrak, how Amtrak runs their sad little shuttle train yeah. between New Haven and Springfield. It's usually like one or two passenger cars. Okay. Uh, it actually used to be it, at one point in time, it was actually connecting cars to the uh, to the regional, but now it's cross-platform transfer. And they decided to beef that up a little bit. With the success of the Hartford line by CT Dot, they have... Uh, Amtrak has gotten a lot more publicity and popularity on this line, and so they're looking into going a little bit farther north. Now, typically, it's just one train a day. The Vermonter goes north and south along the line north of Springfield. But they're looking at extending to these three stations, Holyoke, Northampton, and Greenfield in what would effectively be northern central Massachusetts, almost to the border, uh, almost to the border of New Hampshire and Vermont. So this could actually be, this could actually start less than a week from now. Uh, They're running some nighttime tests on what is called the Knowledge Corridor. Uh, Knowledge. It's called that. Knowledge. Uh, But they had planned, they wanted to, do service in the summer, it was delayed because there was track work and signal work, and Greenfield is kind of a mess. TJ and I were just there. Uh, it's a real tangled place for railroads. And yeah, it's, it's a mess. So they were so they were running trains overnight to test the line. They can get, it's pretty straight, they can get up to 80 miles an hour. Uh, and they also have an actual name for them now, which is the Valley Flyer. Huh. Cool. So... It's not just the knowledge corridor train. I don't understand knowledge. So, knowledge, but yeah. So there's that. I'm looking forward to this. It's at least some good news out of Amtrak. Oh. And uh, it's yeah. very it's rare in this day and age you hear about them expanding service. 
Yeah, and, and it is nice. It is really nice when it happens. It is. Uh, you know, between this and the uh, proposal that I mentioned earlier that is currently hung up uh, to extend the Heartland Flyer northward, I there are a few pretty good tabled ideas here. Uh, also, the other thing that I neglected to mention because we don't have an article for it is uh, they are in the process of uh, figuring out if it's worth doing a second daily round trip of the Pennsylvania. So that's Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. Okay. Oh, okay. So that would be a cool one as well. I think they should take that second round trip and send it all the way through to St. Louis and just call it the National Limited. But that's just me. Uh... Anyway, what else have we got? Well, so we got, um, the FIA is giving Wastock some grants <laughs> for, um, State of Good Repair. Oh, uh, nice. which is 10, uh, which is something that Amtrak did for, um, 10 different states. It's not just Washington, as it turns out. Uh, Illinois has a Briggs replacement uh, that went to Metra. Uh, mm-hmm. New Orleans Union Station platform and plant improvement. Uh, That's good for them because yeah. they're going to be getting another train. Yeah. That's another Amtrak train. That's the Chute Dix, Boston South Station, Spanson Tower 1 interlocking. Mm, I wonder how big that is. <laughs> Massachusetts. Yeah. And, uh, Michigan is doing some repairs. North Carolina is doing some cars. Um, uh, New York Penn Station is doing platform improvements on platform D. That's cool. Nice. Uh, Keystone Corridor Sioux Interlocking State of Good Repair Improve. I don't know what that is. Yeah. So, I, I mean,. I have to I have to bring this up, right? State of good repair. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm cool to I think it's great a great idea to like, you know, here, have some have some money out of merit. Yeah. But doesn't that kind of mean they don't need the money? I suppose. Okay, Ellis, how about this next one? Um <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> World Island, Providence, uh states in state of good repair and capacity. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I still, I, like I still, point. your yeah, point exactly still is right. valid, though. That does <laughs> yeah. seem a bit strange. And then, I mean, but and the next two know. ones are for train sex, uh, for the Hiawatha and the Cascades. Mm-hmm. I think we actually have a Hiawatha article here on its own. Yeah, we do. Trust, trust me, yells at uh, Wastat to go get the Wisconsin Togos. They're still at the factory. There's two of them still yeah. there. Yeah. That was supposed to go to Wisconsin, but they got tied up in some beep. something where yeah, beep. Hear you. <laughs> Dank memes, old memes, old memes. But anyway, yeah, I thought you had something to jump off of with that one. Oof. No, I, I, I just put the uh, I moved the Hiawatha one into the cargoes there because it's it's relevant. Okay, then I also did see. Uh, I did see an article about Providence Station, but I, I didn't get my hands in it for whatever reason. Okay. Then in that case, I'm going to jump off of Amtrak Glance to uh, Amtrak talking with Las Vegas Express. Express West, which I believe yeah. is owned by Brightline. Yep. Turn people in the uh, I'm not a subscriber, so oof. Uh, oh, you know what? I thought I could... Hold on. Or maybe I, I thought can. I could read this. Hold on, let me see if I can look at it. Uh, give me a second. I'm, I'm making an attempt. There is an attempt. But anyways, I, I think it's what what's owned by quite... Uh, Coming to buy in the luxury rail line service... Oh, wait, no, this is different. This is different, I think. Uh, this is not the one that Brightline took over. This is the other one that wanted to do, like, an actual high-speed train. Okay. Uh a high speed so, Las Vegas that. Express Incorporated, the company behind what was previously called the X Train, has been in talks with Amtrak about a possible collaboration on a long long planned train project. Both parties have confirmed. Cool. So uh 
scheduling to run in July 2020 as an Amtrak train. So hmm. that is a really underserved Amtrak market, yeah. I've got to say. Having a, yeah. a an actual train uh, to Las that, Vegas, to Las Vegas, you know, uh, originally Baron planned to have, they also don't really have a station, uh, Union Pacific Railroad confirmed it has talks with Baron about the potential use of its tracks for the proposed privately operated passenger rail service, but no lease has been signed. So honestly, that uh, July 2020 is a little yeah. fetched, I think. A little bit optimistic. But maybe, and I mean, depends how much money yeah. this guy has. Uh, yeah, that's true. Remain an active discussion with United Rail, which is the company that owns uh, Las Vegas Rail Express. Uh, originally, Baron, who's the head, uh, planned to have the station in conjunction with the Greyhound bus station location at located at the Plaza in downtown Las Vegas. Okay. The plan, the plans are unfortunately scrapped as the plaza does not plan on renewing Greyhound's lease. Uh, Greyhound is in the final term of its lease for the bus terminal. The owner of the plaza has no discussion and has no plans to extend, revise, or expand Greyhound's lease. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah. I'm wondering what, I mean, I'm wondering a couple of things. One, what is Greyhound going to do, which it says they're looking around. Two, what is the owner of the facility planning to do that yeah uh in fact since the blah 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 uh the land was being considered okay so baron's plans of late december included the station the plaza has not had any discussion with baron on the x-train team in years in fact she said the plaza quote has built and opened on the core arena a permanent equestrian and multi-use outdoor facility on the land that was being considered many years ago for the train okay. uh, the planned rail service is tentatively scheduled to run friday through sunday with a typical trip carrying 10 passenger cars only up to 700 passengers per trip. Okay. Food and beverage service would be provided. And, of course, because it's Vegas, they can package it with hotels, nightclubs, golf, restaurant deals. They, they have an entertainment know. car on the exactly. train. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It would mark the first rail service since Las Vegas, or for Las Vegas since 1997. Since Amtrak discontinued the route that stopped at the plaza, then known as Union Plaza. Yeah. And uh, they have been working on this plan since 2010. Meanwhile, this is the other side of it, Virgin Trains has announced plans to obtain $800 million in bonds, which it could use to leverage into $3.2 billion to go towards developing a separate $4 billion high-speed train project to run between Las Vegas and Victorville. That's what it was. So the company okay. that Brightline acquired was the high-speed train company, and then Express West or whatever... Las Vegas Express yeah. was the, we want to just run a train, a normal train. Yeah. Uh, I, keep, I kept getting those mixed up. Uh, Bar Baron said that's where he has a leg up in the competition because he has tracks already. Yeah. He didn't need to lay high-speed rail tracks. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> but never forget, if you're going to Vegas, the house always wins. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Can't confirm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Went there, didn't gamble. Yeah. Um. Don't know how I'm gonna say all that. Uh, just just uh, go. You don't have to. You, you know what? I could go speed. Spe <laughs> yeah. The, 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 what? The, what? Why? Well, it, it's not as it's not as well formed as I thought it would be. Oh. Okay. The, never mind. Go through with it. Okay. Let's Too late. let's uh let's talk about our favorite named engine of all time. Favorite. Name. Duke. Um. Skookum. Oh. It was sounding about Skookum. on the Niles Canyon Railway. Uh, actually, I think last weekend? No. Skookum. Like, like last week it was sounding about. And it, Skook. Skook. I, I'm, I'm so happy to see it running and used. Yeah. I know, I love it. I love Skookum. It's like, we want to build a Malay, but let's make it as small as possible. No, we want to build a Mikado, but let's make it a Malay. Yeah. We, we, want it, we want to build a Mikado, but we also want it to bend. Yeah. <laughs> we want a very flimsy Mikado. I'm sorry, you heard us. We were, flimsy, you know, like, uh, you know, it sort of bends in the middle. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Let me talk to engineering on that. Yeah, but it, it went, and it was... Yeah, they come in with a drinking straw, yeah. like this. 
<laughs> We've brought this highly technical model to demonstrate the articulation action. Yeah. Oh, and the guy rips it out of his hands yeah. and goes, Are you crazy? Think of the turtles. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're a monster! Someone well, speaking of... Uh, design. Speaking of high technical uh, models, uh, the Navajo coal mine railroads are... Actually, never mind. Blah. Brad Mason Power is their actual name. I... <laughs> And they're one. Is it Black Mason like Powell or is it the other one? Uh, well, this guy's looking at. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. it okay. It's the Brat Mason. Because there are the, the two of them and I constantly confuse them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the operators says he will miss the best job in the world. Which, when you're running around in a circle. Uh, it's it's not a circle, it's more like a dog yeah. loop. Also, hey. Yeah. <laughs> At least well, I, 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 I won in a U, so... No, I don't want in a circle yet. We <laughs> can just keep going. Yep. But anyway, um, he... He just describes his career on uh, the railroad, and... The final road for the railroad is scheduled for uh, August 26th, which is in a couple of days. I, I'm kind of curious to see what happens to the Etrix after their um, decommission. Even odds, they're going to literally leave them there because yeah, because yeah, that's they can't, true. You know, they can't drive them anywhere. Yeah. There isn't anywhere. I mean, to are, they, are they are they gonna immediately tear up the railroad or just not run it anymore? So just gonna become a relic. Like someday someone be like, I want one of my interurban car and he boom. Hashtag fire no, up no, the black you know and like, <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I know what's gonna happen. Someday. Yeah. Those guys, those lunatic guys that are building out into the Uinta base, are yeah. gonna find it and connect to it. Oh, and then voila, it'll no longer be so isolated. Anyway, yeah. speaking of those guys, uh, Rio Grande Pacific Corp, which is what they're calling them, <laughs> has named uh, Mark Hemphill, who's apparently a rail industry vet veteran, nice. to lead the development and construction of the Uinta Basin Railway Project, a $1.5 billion new build that when completed billion billion with a b uh which is expected to be completed around 2022 or 2023 which will serve utah's energy mineral agricultural blah 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 uh it is built through a dbfom which is a design build finance operate maintain p3 pro public private partnership uh they didn't close those parentheses <laughs> comprised yeah. of rio grande pacific drexel hamilton and blah 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 blah, blah. What? DBFOM is a terrible, like, abbreviation. Yeah. That's barely easier to say. Yep. Uh, they will, Rio Grande Pacific will construct, operate, and maintain the railway. Drexel Hamilton is commercializing it, financing it. The coalition will obtain federal environmental clearances, which, when you're in the middle of the desert, I don't think is that hard. That hard, uh, yeah. Hemphill has led studies of the railway since 2014. He was a consultant for the last five years. Uh, and he expects to, you know, the railway itself will be about 80 miles, they say, uh, interchange with UP and BNSF near Soldier Summit. And he, uh, Emphill brings about 38 years of railroad experience, which is nice, or railroad industry experience, including the, oh, including rebuilding the Iraqi Republic Railways wow. in 2005, 2006 after the war. Okay. Uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, yeah that's a that's a resume yeah. thing. How that's old is builder. how old is Hemp Hill? Uh, he seems to have a little bit of salt and pepper in his hair. So okay, uh, late forties, early fifties. Yeah, maybe he doesn't look old, but you know he's middle aged. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark's railway expertise, project management skills, blah 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 blah. Okay, that's just pumping up his ego. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ring Pacific is a short line rail operator with. Rio Grande Pacific is a short-lined rail operator with properties in six states uh, and associated railroad services and construction companies. So, these guys already exist. Uh, 
Drexel Hamilton teamed with Rio Grande Pacific subsidiary New Orleans and Gulf Coast Railway, uh, which was the Railway Ages 2016 Shortline of the Year. Uh, wow. So, uh, to provide railway transportation for this huge liquid terminal in Louisiana, which will become the largest oil export facility in the Western Hemisphere when completed in 2022. Allegedly. Uh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I love hearing more about this railroad because just as we don't hear too much about Amtrak expansion in this day and age, actual real bona yeah. private rail expansion is uh is bizarre more rare. Yeah, we yeah, really. Uh Yeah, talking or um hopping off of the Hispanic Empire. Uh there's a kind of opinion piece out there that I I put in here uh debating Philly's iconic trolley system time for its ransom? Question mark. Well, also, this isn't yeah. private either, but... Yeah. Uh, it is neither private nor... Well, I guess the, you, the idea you, of expansion you, is right. Yeah. Uh, the... So what is it? Is it the question of do we rebuild the PCCs or do we expand the system? Because I saw the picture of the PCC. And yeah, um... I think, well, uh, earlier this month, uh, Philadelphia's tri- trolley wires faced one of the greatest banks of the year, a temporary shutdown of the trolley tunnel bum, bum, on SEPTA that uh, closed the city, conne- the, the major city connector for 10 days. Average weekday on SEPTA. Yeah, average uh, weekday on SEPTA. Next also, week. I would like to, to bring attention to something that I put in the horseman earlier today, which is a post from at MBTA War on Twitter. Oh, no. Otherwise known as Civil War MBTA. And it's, Mother, it has gone from bad to worse. I believe this is the last time I will write you. The track fires on the orange line have left all of us trapped in the city. <laughs> there is no escape. There is no hope. I will send you my monthly pass as there are no refunds. <laughs> Hashtag MBTA. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm getting some wow. major, um, what's the good night <laughs> the a, song? Dearest Sarah vibes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a, there's a picture of like a Civil War soldier laying down <laughs> that that they posted along with it. Nice. <laughs> uh, I should have tried to sing it. That would have been fun. Yeah. Well, speaking of things not moving. Uh, oh, boy. Disney so, you again? Wait, what? I said 1309 again? No, Disney broke. Oh, no. The oh, happiest place on Earth. I heard about yeah. this. The Ward Kim mm. broke down and they had to offload people around the Star Wars. Broke down. Ladies and gentlemen, it broke an axle. Ooh. Ooh. Like, in half. I'll be seeing you at Strasburg. Yeah. Yeah. Just- well, they don't, I don't know where they send the California engines. This is at Disney Disneyland, not Disney World. Oh, okay. I don't know where they send the Disneyland. Well, we'll Land. see. Yeah, but uh, if I see. it broke an axle, and then they apparently offloaded the train, got the thing jacked up. Luckily, it was on the rear trailer, or it was on the rear truck, so they didn't have to, like, crane the thing. It was also on the bridge, because, of course, yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah. I they towed it. They it. towed it back to the shop with number four, which is uh, the Waltazuma, the two four zero, little okay. red one. Okay. It looks like Montezuma. Waltazuma. It's, it's, it's what they call it. Pretty yikes! Uh, speaking of uh, of trains breaking, there was a derailment in uh, Sacramento. And Which was in, involving their um, their right wheel, and twenty seven people were injured. Thirteen were transported to hospitals. Uh, the rest were Dude. treated on scene. Oh, Alex, I was gonna say yeah. typically when when like a light rail thing or something derails, it's usually pretty not like grisly, yeah. but it's usually pretty bad for the people because you're all packed in there. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. strapped down or whatever. You just go well, the, tumbling. The but safety standards for light rails are not what they are for, you know, actual no. trains. And they're not what they but used also, to be, either. <laughs> if you, well, if you also send, uh, send, if you also have, 
Blah. But you expect them to be fairly minor injuries. Yeah. I mean, you expect like a lot of people are going to get busted out, but 13 people sent to the hospital is kind of a high number. It's more than I expected, certainly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, slightly concerning. Yeah. I hope they're all going to be okay. Yeah, I don't know I. how serious it actually was, but that's, again, kind of a high number to go to the hospital. Yeah. Tis. Speaking uh, uh, of numbers... numbers. Uh oh. Oh, never mind. Fight to the death. Fight, fight, fight. Kiss, kiss. You know kiss. what? That can fight me when UP furrows my butt because they furrowed 55 workers in North Pratt. But they love their workers. Also, I don't work for UP. And they're also <laughs> hiring, which. <laughs> yeah. Explain to me, explain to me how that one works. Yeah. They're only hiring drone operators. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but. Some railroads do actually kind of like their employees, and some railroads like <laughs> other people, too. And CSX has just come out with their brand new Spirit of Law Enforcement commemorative locomotive, which looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, maybe questionable decisions with heritage units lately by a number of railroads, namely UP. Why would uh, you put count a locomotive? Yeah, also KCS. Uh, also CSX. Also, uh, CSX but, is like no kidding. They've they're developing a heritage fleet. Well, not necessarily a heritage fleet, but something like special units. They're getting there. CSX for the first time in a very long time is acting like acting like they want to be the good guy. It's kind of strange. And also, we we had an article in here about them being safe, but I just deleted it because I thought we would never get to it. But apparently, CSX has been pretty safe lately. Huh. Speaking Contrary to popular belief, you know. But, you know, that's good. I, I Again, I think this is a gorgeous engine. Uh, I typically don't like a lot of these commemorative units. Mm. But, no one's alright. No one's alright. The blue and the black, I think, goes pretty well together. Nice. Yeah. Also, the blue and white bits, I mean, the blue and red bits lights are pretty Oh, yeah, that's right. It's got blue and red dish lights. That's awesome. <laughs> like you're going to pull somebody yeah. over. I didn't know that was a legal thing, but... Apparently, the FRA doesn't define required colors for I, dish lights. I'm not surprised, honestly. I mean, also, I'm not either. It's just, it seems like the kind of thing that they never thought anyone would mess with. I suppose. Oh, I, heard that, I heard that the red and blue dish lights were just for photo shoots. Oh, okay. That's I mean, I could possible. see that. It would be kind of, you know, imagine the thing goes by and you put your ditch lights on and you notice everybody on the side road pulls over. Yeah. That'd actually be pretty uh, cool. And, and Until they pull over on the level the crossing, way. then it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Ashland, Virginia, anybody? Yeah. When was the last time you saw a train get nicked for speeding? When was the last time? <laughs> when was the last time something was so beautiful? <laughs> it drove you to <laughs> tears. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Good God. You know what drives me to tears? Speak of Utah, actually. Oh, yeah. no. All I've been right. meaning to speak. I was trying to segue to this when we were talking about Utah earlier, and somehow we're back. Um, okay. The uh, Salt Lake Union Station, although it's... I, was, it, was it a Union Station, actually? Uh, I think it may. Ogden was Ogden was the Union Station. I don't know if anything else actually went through Salt Lake. Anyway... The train station in Salt Lake, which has proudly flown the giant neon flying rear grand. This link is the wrong link. Is it? Uh, it just took me to the Converse and Salt Lake website. God damn it, Ellis. <laughs> oh, wait, no, uh, no, 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 sorry, yours is good. I clicked on the wrong thing. I had clicked on the oh, line okay. I was going to be like, I don't know how I'm I did like, that. How did that work? <laughs> um, anyway, it is... This beautiful building has, for many, many years, been adorned by a giant flying Rio Grande neon sign, which we actually got to see on the Golden Spike Limited, which is really, really cool. Sure. Um, it has fallen into a state of disrepair recently, unfortunately, or recently, though, and <laughs> because it's an older style sign, they haven't been able to do repairs on it, so it was removed recently. It went to the Heber Railroad. Heber Valley. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It went to the Heber, um, and it's due to be replaced sometime soon with a similar sign that has the logo on both sides, and that can also actually be maintained by you know modern methods. Yeah, which is good. They Here's don't. The they don't want so, you know this. 
this giant sign from half a century ago, you know, to be like this giant safety Which, hazard or raining fire down. I mean, I will I will bring up the fact that the reason they were not maintaining it, aside from the fact that it was difficult to get parts for a giant neon sign, is the fact that the catwalks have deteriorated to the point where people would refuse to go up there. Yeah. Uh, like, the contractors that were tasked with maintaining the side just basically said, no, we're not going to do <laughs> like, that because nope. we could fall off the roof and die. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which, speak so, of the Rio Grande dropping stuff from the sky. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, an oh, article boy. from the Durango Herald this past week, it was August the 20th, which was on Tuesday, touts uh, how the residents of North Durango had to put out yet another fire that the DNS started. This one's an interesting story, though, because we actually have some fairly conclusive evidence that the train didn't start the fire. Video Re- evidence? Not video, photo. He was taking pictures. Oh, photo, okay. Sorry, I think I said video yeah. earlier. Um, fire! The, it, uh, lies and deceit! <laughs> you clearly are just a defendant of the railroad. Anyway, the, the story goes that the Durango and Silverton started a fire as they were coming back into town on Tuesday. The problem with that from a railroad standpoint is this was a light engine pulling just a caboose and they're rolling downhill into town. Like, yeah. the engine's not working, it's not throwing cinders, it's not doing anything like that. Regardless, citizens said that, you know, or witnesses said that, oh, the fire sparked up immediately as the engine rolled by and we had to douse it before the fire department could even get there and yada, 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 yada. Um, the rumor was sort of put down, and although it hasn't been publicly acknowledged by local photographer Jerry Day, who I think we've talked about before. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe just a little. Well, I don't know if we've talked about him on here. He's, uh, he happened to be, like, exactly where the fire started after, or as the train was passing, and was taking pictures, and no, posted no picture. Yeah, posted pictures after the article went up going, uh, the train actually didn't start a fire as it went past. He was there as it went by, was there for probably another five or ten minutes afterwards, and then left, and then the fire started, which is not how that works. Yeah. I know it's a big semantic flying grass seed theory, then fuck <laughs> But I doubt that was it. I doubt that was it. Uh, I think it was yeah. definitely it. <laughs> because it is, it is also worth noting that the spot where this fire started is between the railroad tracks and the road. It's actually closer to the road than it is the railroad track. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the picture is pretty, like, it's just sandwiched in there. It's just a small, it is dry and hot parcel. It is. It's uh, a part that is, right as the train is coming into town, it's literally, like you said, it's sandwiched between the track and the road that parallels it up to Animus City. Also, full disclosure, we did have another article, which is basically just people dissing the railroad, and I honestly forgot to put it in, and then when I realized that I forgot to put it in, I sort of decided it's not really worth it because there's nothing of substance in there. It's not so, news. You know. It's, no. It's but you know what is news? What's up? You know what is news? Uh, remember those dumb kids in uh, the UK that tore apart that layout? I heard about this. They have received a sentence. Dun, dun, uh, which, uh, I mean, the monetary sentence is not particularly extravagant, but then again, it's basically kids where would they get money to you know, yeah. Uh, do that anyway. So they have been, you know, they will pay 500 pounds compensation, but also there's something in here about uh, they were given a 12 month referral order, which is sort of like, uh, sort of like, from what I understand, it's sort of like a cross between probation and community service. Uh, Interesting. I don't, I don't really understand. I'm not an expert in in UK law or really any law, but uh, definitely not UK law because I speak American, not English. So uh, I I don't I don't know exactly what that means. Somebody tried to explain it in the fan chat, and I sort of understood that it was like okay, so that was, they that can was be, me. You know, that was you. Okay, that's right. Yeah, can you shed was... some more light on this? Yeah, I I did a little bit of googling. I read a pamphlet online from some English court. Basically, you go to this hearing, there's three people there, sometimes the victim is there also, you talk about what you did, you figure out a way you can You basically make a contract where you do some kind of community service, sometimes for the victim, in order to make amends. That is, like, exactly what I was hoping for, honestly. Huh. Interesting. Uh, 
I it it really is important to have people like this understand the implications of what they did and also understand why it's a bad thing, you know? Yep. Because a lot of people, I mean, and I'm sure we're guilty of it too, even though we are model railroaders and we care very much about our hobby and whatever, you sort of look at something that somebody else has put a ton of time into going and be like, why? You know? Like, yeah. Look at that. Look at what that you got out of that. That doesn't know? look realistic. You know? That's not... Yeah. Or, why is or the headlight all big? Why are the wheels so small? Why does the cab look like that? Why is the <laughs> and the intern at Alco is going, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, but... You know, it's it's important to understand that when people put their their time and their effort into something like that, it's really important uh, to them, at least, even if it's not important to you. It, it matters because they put their time in. Now, uh, when it comes to people putting their time in, generally these days we expect at least two people doing that in the cab of a diesel locomotive hauling freight across the United States. Although, we did have a little bit of a hullabaloo a couple of weeks ago where the FRA announced that there are actually no provisions for ensuring that you have two people oh, no. or more in a crew cap. However, Illinois has signed a bill into law, or at least the, government is, the governor has signed a bill, that requires two-person train crews in Illinois. So, I'm not sure if this means we're going to get another... Uh, you know, a wave of states that have similar legislation, but... Have we talked about least, this yet? We have talked about it. We did talk about it, uh, I think it was two or three termini ago when it was brought up about the one-man crew thing. Oh, okay. We did have a discussion. I think you were there, but I can't recall. Well, I, the thing I'm trying to recall is whether or not I mentioned it with regard to the fact that Colorado signed one already. Oh, did they? Okay. Yes, so we, that's, we have that, that's one that's similar. States. That's at least two states, then. So that's that's really interesting, and I'm wondering if it's going to really. I, I'm wondering a how quickly it's going to make a difference, and b how much of a difference it actually makes. Uh, in the long run, I mean, certainly it's it's better for the employees. In the long run, I could see it being slightly detrimental to companies if there's a major paradigm shift to one man crews, uh, because then they'll want to avoid these states. Yeah. You know, to to send trains that, with one. Then that's cruise. when you open up a tourist railroad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Whoops. I I assume. Well, I don't yeah. think a tourist railroad is going to run with one person in the cab anyway. But I assume. That, well, no, I mean you know, what you were talking about, like them abating the two person states. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then all the tracks in there yep. just get abandoned, and turned into turned into roads. Yeah. Uh. Well, if we get anything else that's kind of important that we want to cover before we get to the latest train on Amtrak? Uh, Peter Fonda died. What? Yeah, that's... that's Wait, what? Yep. Yeah. Oh! Also, can you put that link back? Thank you. Peter Aww. Fonda passed away about a week ago. Oh. Yeah. Green for glory. But, um... Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, I was like, who was he? I can't recall. Yeah. Uh, Prominently he was, the, he was the depressed one. Yeah, he was the old guy in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Yeah. That's a shame. Someone was like, why is he was, Peter Fonda... He was Fonda... 79. Someone in the fan chat was like, why is Peter Fonda relevant? And, you know... Wow. It's easy to forget these guys. I mean, especially if you is. either didn't see or don't care for Thomas and the Magic <laughs> Railroad. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, which, know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't but think I'm anybody would names. fault you. Uh, but yeah, also... Also, uh, yeah. It's just remembering all these actors oh. and stuff. Oh. Uh, Sad face. Well, anyway... Sorry, uh, I, al I also have another article. I've been sitting on this for a while. It's about the Gateway Project. I grouse about that about once every two termini. So it's my, you know, it's my time to do that. Uh, <laughs> they should really build these tunnels. You guys already all know the reasons why. Uh, if there's one of them breaks and there's water in there, you could have lots of lives lost potentially, and also like a near total shutdown of the eastern seaboard and the loss of like a fifth of our GDP. Anyway. Uh, it's fine. So, you know, build the tunnels, people. Uh, 
And Europe wants to build some cool tunnels. Uh, over here we call them Hyperloops, but I think they might have another name for them. They're for a different company. Basically, they're knocking off Elon Musk. And But we might actually see them built. They don't have any flamethrowers, though, so what is it really worth? Uh, also a cool video of a wind turbine train that, that uh, I believe it was Virtual Rail Fan put out. So. Cool. Is there anything else that we want to cover before we head off? this evening, or at least head towards the end of the show. Not that Speak I can... Speak now think, or yeah. forever hold your peace. Oh, Fort Wayne got a depot. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, that's another cool thing. It's a really adorable little building. It, it's not a modern picture of it, so I don't know what kind of shape it is in now, but it is what it is. Huh. Uh, anyway, let us let me pull up the uh, Amtracker here, and let's talk about the latest train on Amtracker real quick. So, let me get a feel for how things are, and then you guys can submit your questions. Actually, things are not looking half bad on the Amtracker. Wow, that's really late for one of those. Uh, oh. That's also kind of late for one of those. Wow, that left really late. Uh, most of the trains are off the system because it's so late at night. Yeah. But yeah, I, re I appreciate all of you for sticking around for this. Thank you. I so was about much. to go to bed, uh, and then you posted the question, and I was like, oh, <laughs> Well, so, that's your mistake. Well, yeah, that's uh, you. <laughs> you weren't required to be here. The other three people were. And also, Madison is sitting next to me now, for some reason, also has a, has a pair of headphones in. Hi, Madison! Uh, Hi, Madison. Hello. Top ten anime class show, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so let's do our latest train on Amtrak. Oh, Everybody right. gets one guess and one guess only, and then... Uh, I can see it, I don't count. Yeah, well, you don't count. I, I can't go with my babies because they may be off the system, so... Eastbound Empire Builder. Eastbound Empire Builder, okay. Westbound California Zephyr. Westbound California Zephyr. Okay, whoops, that's this one. Okay. Eastbound Sunset Limited. Okay. It's found Sunset Limited. We're just moving down the country. If you had said Southwest Chief, and then, you know, uh, Eastbound Sunset Limited, you said? Yep. Okay. Ooh, there was one hiding underneath a different train. Uh, okay. And TJ? Uh, northbound Northeast Regional. Ooh. Oh, boy. That's a bold that, one. That's a very I, I assume, particular one. I, I assume you're going off of me saying, wow, that one shouldn't be that late. Yes, also, I've been on trains this late at night, and they are very late. <laughs> Typically they are, but there is not a single regional on the board Ooh. that is not green. Ugh. There is a silver meteor that's about an hour behind, but really that's nothing. To, oh, sorry, it's two hours behind. That's nothing to write home about, really, for the silver meteor. Uh, the eastbound... Empire Builder, right? Yep. Is 55 minutes late. It's in the middle okay. of North Dakota. There is a second eastbound Empire Builder that is 27 minutes late. Okay. And a third that it's four minutes late. That's the other part of it that goes to Portland. Uh, okay. Or comes from Portland in this case. Yep. Uh, the California Zephyr, the westbound California Zephyr, right? Talk the something. latest... Yes. What? Yes, westbound California. Uh, the... There is one that is 26 minutes late, and another that is an hour and 21 minutes late. That's a little bit later. It's in the middle of Utah, but it's it's pretty close for the California Zephyr. Uh, there was a post on slash r slash Amtrak a little while ago, somebody asking about a really tight Greyhound bus connection on the California Zephyr. And basically everyone said, you're not going to make it. <laughs> you're going to have to stay overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sunset Limited to New Orleans is one hour and 25 minutes late. So a little bit later than that. And the latest train on Amtrak. Actually, I'll cover this one first because it's not the latest, but it's close. This is the one that caught my attention. There's a Pacific Surfliner that is two hours and fifty minutes behind schedule. <laughs> That's yeah. a strange one. Yeah. That is very unusual. And there is an Illinois Zephyr that is three hours and 25 minutes behind schedule. And that is the latest train on Amtrak. Illinois Thank Zephyr? You. Yeah, that's, the a, Illinois that's Zephyr. a very I don't know that I've ever heard of it. It literally goes from Chicago to Quincy, Illinois. It doesn't leave the state. It goes across the state. What the uh, hell? Sort of diagonally. Yeah, this, this it is. Feels... It's uh, it's one of these little regional services that they have. I mean, more power to them. But easy to forget. Yeah. yeah. For huh. those of us that don't live here. 
Uh, just for reference, the uh, Canadian is 3 hours and 38 minutes late, which is really good for the Canadian, but is later than every other Amtrak train. Mm -hmm. uh, so, nice job, eh? Yeah. Anyway... Uh, let's, uh, let's round out this podcast here at the end of the line. Why, well, you're up first. I forgot to think of a termination. Good job. I forgot to. Uh, I did until you guys were mid-sentence. Is that your termination, Weibold? No. Well, yeah, I don't have any other one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I thought you were just stalling for time. No, I, I don't uh, have one. Okay, okay. Um, next is Doxon. Oh, God, of course. Yeah, Pretty for... Oh man. It's amazing that this meme has come back after years. Yeah. Let it be dead. No. Creeper. Somebody was oh, man, kept baby. trying to start somebody kept trying to start that in the in the yeah. Strasbourg stream chat. <laughs> A couple of times it actually got kinda of far along. <laughs> uh, what is it? It's it's uh, the Minecraft Revenge parody. Creeper, you probably oh man, but we do. You had your whole playlist of Minecraft parodies. Yeah, uh, did. These days, that's that's back in style. Uh, yeah. So I would like to say that tonight marked the first semi-official because I didn't have the wagon because it's out of commission. Uh, semi-official horseman roadside rescue. <laughs> uh oh. I can tell the story a little bit later, although it is kind of late. Uh, Long story short, I had to change a tire on the side of the interstate. Nice. Uh, oh, I thought you rescued somebody else. No, I did. I did. Oh, okay, cool. I drove out. You rescued I, Shay. I drove out there with um, with uh, a jack and stuff, and I ended up, you know, had to call a had to call the uh, the state police to come and give us a hand, but <laughs> we were there. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, uh, who is next? Me. Okay. Um, with the Sprink baseboards for my words that are available on the DOS. We should use one of those yep. for a route competition. And TJ? Uh, I got nothing. We have two nothing terminations. Come on, guys. Uh, Get good. Also, I, I've been struggling with the Steam broadcaster. It, it has good days and bad days. I, yeah. It, it's given me basically nothing all night. I, know. Uh, I, I, I think uh, a few days ago, someone was stalking me on Grand Theft Auto 5 while I was showing out my cars. Yeah. So, speaking of which, uh, Wobble, how's that download? Um, 7 hours, 26 minutes. Oh, boy. All right, I, let's not play Blackjack. Maybe tomorrow morning. All right. Yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Terminus Podcast, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks, maybe at a more reasonable time, maybe with more or less news, maybe with a local variety. Maybe we can talk or, about uh, the Utah wait. trip for once. <laughs> yeah, we're only a couple of months. Yeah. We're only, uh, well, it's still four months away, yeah. but I am thinking about the next Zombie Train locomotive versus. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. We have had a couple of interesting fire-ups since then. Yeah. Anyway. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.